Why is betting so damn hard? Well, I can handicap a race so well and then lose anyways. Well, I'll go over various strategies as to why and uh, betting throughout. So we'll cover that. I'm Scotty McKeever, founder of equineedge.com and winner of over $5 million in pick sixes, as well as many tournament wins. And I'm going to show you how to use our platform, show you different ways of betting, right? We're going to, we're going to, we're, of course, we're going to cover all the races like we normally do. So follow along with us. If you're new to horse racing, you're going to enjoy this as well. This platform actually was created for new people in mind because we wanted to draw new people to the game of horse racing. So if you're new or you're an intermediate and you wanted to learn the game, this is the show for you. So stick around, watch us throughout the format of the show as we go through race by race. We'll cover pick fives, different various bets. We'll go to different tracks and we'll handicap on the fly. That's what you can do with Equine Edge. All right. So uh, stick with us and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Last week, we had a, a numerous people hit the pick five by following along and they're making their own bets. They're listening to me. I'm handicapping. We're using the tool and they're able, they were able to win $6,100 on a pick five. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll cover a lot. We'll cover a lot of races and uh, it'll be entertaining as well because if you're new to the show, then uh, you're going to see that the chat room, you know, they're a little annoying, but it's a lot of fun. You know, they think they're better than they are, but that's okay. They've got me to cover them for so let's get going. You guys ready? How are how are you? Anyways, chat room, Tony. Like that. You like that, right? I got the faux hawk going on right now. What's up? What's up, up? Jim in the house. What up, Michael? Justin. Who else is there? Dan. What up, Dan? So hey, those of you that are new, Leah, Jeffrey. Hey, those of you that are new, make sure you chat with us so we all know you're there and you're gonna get a lot of support because we have got a very loyal community here, all right? So my job is just to kind of handicap their job on the chat. Your job is to entertain. UMC in the house, USMC in the house. What up? Devil Dog. John? Nice. What's up? John Paul, there's Oldie. Oldie hit, is one of the ones that hit the, uh, you hit that pick five last week, didn't you, Oldie? I think it was a pick five. There's Jeff. Guys, say hello to Jeff. He's new in the group. Just signed up. Kevin, what up? All right. It's a way to start a show. Ready to go. Hey, last week, too, if you guys saw, I mean, of course, it was a Breeders' Cup show, so it's understandable, but we had almost 12,000 people watch the show. 12,000 people. It was incredible. That just pumped me up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to win some money. So we're going to go over different bets. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to bet. All right. So there's different ways you can do it. And uh, we'll just get going. We'll just get started. Uh, I want to start. Uh, thank you to Mike Bryant. So he, uh, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking down at my notes, my phone as well. All right. So don't mind me there. I'll try to look at you as much as possible. But that's a lot, a lot of stuff to remember. Um, Michael had a question. He wants to know, how was the SOR created and why is it valuable? Well, so Michael, the, the answer to the SOR is called strength of race. And it's valuable because it shows you how strong the competition was in the race that you're looking at, each race. So in this case here, we'll go to the past performances, right? Which is called, we call it handy view. And there it is right there. So you can look at the SOR and strength of race and you can see how strong the field was in kind of comparison to the other horses, right? So like this, Romy's a first time starter. So look at the right to freedom, the two in race number five. So this horse got a third place finish, broke seventh from the rail at 22 to one in a non-graded stakes race. You see that? And the SOR was a 60, not a bad race from the rail, third lifetime start. And then when you look at the GSR, it's pretty equal of a 67 up here in comparison to the 68 in that race going seven furlongs on synthetic. We'll talk more about the GSR, but you can see this two horses, an interesting horse, and he's got a 32% win percentage, okay? So that's a way you can use the SOR. And you can use it from the front page here too. This is average SOR, which grades the last five races of a horse, if in fact the horse had five races, okay? So you divide that by five, you would take the total number of it, divide by five, and what you can see here, if you wanna sort it, you can see the two horse and the four horse has been facing the best competition. Then you can look over to the right and you're looking at the, the GSR 
which everything in this GSR line here is current surface and distance. All right, so eight and a half furlongs on the synthetic track, lifetime. You can see none of these horses have ever been eight and a half furlongs, which means now the GSR, genetic strength rating, plays a huge role in races like this. And as most of our uh, users know, this is their favorite tool because what do you do in a race where you can't judge a horse? First time starter, horse doing something for the first time, like every one of these horses in this fifth race at Woodbine. And that's where we're going to lean towards the GSR. So you can see here, the one diamond or 73 on the GSR and, uh, and, and all the way down. So we have the elimination feature over here, right? And this is one of my favorite features because I, I want to eliminate horses. I don't want to handicap nine horses or eight horses in this case in this race, right? So I can come over and see a low GSR 52, a low average SOR 46, and a 3% win on the five right round, right? And instantly, I'm going to go to the elimination feature and I'm going to get rid of that horse. He's out. Now I'm looking at less horses, okay? So that's a way to use the feature. All right, what do we got? By the way, did you see in race number one? So, okay, we're going to start with our, uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to bet. You can bet different ways, okay? And But watch this way here. So if you would have played... Remember, I've talked throughout the shows about how you can just box the top three numbers. So a $1 trifecta box is an exact or an exact a box. You can do that. So if we'd have taken the top three horses in this first race at Aqueduct, in this case, it would be, we sorted it, 66, 65, and 65. So 2, 4, 10. Well, in this case at Aqueduct, you see 2, 10. So let's see what it paid. So a $6 bet on an exacta would have paid you $46.25. Okay. That's a way to do it. If you want to play a daily double in this race, we could have done two, four, six, and then let's go to race number two. We could have taken the top two in this case, the six and the eight, because they were 74 and 73, well above the next closest horse in the five, which had a top win percent, one of the top win percentages. But now you've got conflicting information. So yeah, so you're saying, well, which one should I play? Well, how the hell do I know? I don't know. Like we all have to make that call. That's the, the that's the deciding factor as to whether we make money or not. So, but in this case, look at that six and eight. So you would have hit that daily double if you would have played that, and that would have paid you fifty bucks for a buck. And then you could have also done what we talked about, taking the top two. You could have done an exacta box here, easy, just with the top two GSRs. They were well ahead of the other seventy four and seventy three. Now, it might not hit, but here's the point: what you can do, take your budget. Let's just say it's. 200 bucks. And there's a total, you're going to say, I'm going to just play Aqueduct today. That's my home track. And I'm going to box. So you could have come over and you play 10 races and say, okay, I'm going to play $200 budget. That's the max I'm going to lose and do it. So $10 a race you're going to play. So let's just say it's 12, right? So you could play a $2 exacta box in every race here at Aqueduct today, just covering the top three GSR numbers in all the races your money's in, you put your bets in, you call it a day, you're done. And then you're just watching and see how it goes. You don't touch it. You leave it alone. That's one way of playing. You know, I, you know, my, my friend, Tim Yoler, who's a top handicapper in the country, he takes the top two Scotty picks and the Scotty long shot. And he does that exact same thing and just boxes those. Okay. So that's one of the ways that you can play. All right. What else did Michael say? Okay, you know, I answered that question, Michael, and I didn't, you know, what do you do when the, when, the, when the metrics don't match? You know, that's a tough one. You have to make a decision. But if you decide that you want to decide and, and make a determination of how you want to play, okay, do you, you know, and, and stick with it. On this show, it's a little bit different, right? We're having fun. I'm not taking it as seriously. We're going from race to race to race, and we're playing. I, you know, so I'm really not being a very good example here. I know. So, yeah, and the, the, the GSR and the Scotty picks are complete. So there's 24 different algorithms on our site, okay, 24. One of them is the Scotty top two picks. That's a separate algorithm, AI, if you've ever heard of it. And essentially, it's a computer that's picking these picks. Everyone's like, Scotty, how do you play all these tracks and put your picks up? I'm like, well, I, initially, I would just I'd poke fun at them and say, yeah, it's, it's like 10 hours of work. It's, it's really tough, and I'm just doing it all day long. But, yeah. Um, 
But anyways, that's one of them. The Scotty Longshot is a separate algorithm. The win percentages are a separate algorithm. If you're new to horse racing or you're an intermediate, those win percentages hit at a 36% win clip. Now, it's not a flat bit profit. So if you did that with every single race, every single track, you're going to lose a little bit of money. But that's also including the takeout. They're not bad. It's not. It's like a 9% or 10% loss. So if you pick the right races and you have the right strategy, you might be able to find a profit in there. The Scotty long shot is by far our best algorithm as far as ROI. And the Scotty top pick is 1% less winning than the win percentages, but it's got a higher ROI, okay? For whatever that's worth. All right, welcome to Steve. Well, and you know, Steve, that's a really good, well, that's what everybody knows that knows me. That's the reason I created this in the first place. One, well, this, the main reason was I, I was handicapping, you know, the form for hours and hours and hours. It was just, you know, it was, it was horrible. I had no life. You guys know what I'm talking about. It was terrible. And, and it's just something had to change and evolve. And so I wanted some that was going to be quicker. I still don't want anybody to tell me what to bet. This is a subjective tool, guys. This doesn't make the odds go lower because there's so much information here. People are playing differently, right? So I don't want to hear that because that's not what's happening here. It's still subjective handicapping, which is great. I've got my coffee and we're we get to do this and have some fun handicapping on the show and chatting and all that. So for those of you that are new, welcome. You're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're just, we're still handicapping. We're not just saying, oh, what's the top win percentage? Let me bet it blindly. That's not what we're doing here. And you'll see that. All right. So um also, Mike's question, why is the GSR important or is it as important as I think it is? Generally speaking, consistently higher numbers reflect a better horse. So, yeah, I mean, that's the case. So we're going to go to the GSR plus and this is uh, let's find an allowance race or something. Let's see what we can find. So, OK, you got a maiden straight maiden race here at Aqueduct. Um, you can see the race is off turf, but it hasn't reflected yet. So, Brad, if you're watching, we need to fix that. So this should turn brown and all the other. So all the other metrics should reflect that. So we've got a bug there. We, we'll, we'll get that. Um, Jeff, what's your, what time will will I be on air to? I'm not sure. I don't understand the question. I'm, am I, Jeff, am I on air? Would, are you just trying to mess with me right now? All right. So if you look at the GSR+, Plus, these are straight maidens. And normally what you're going to see... All right. I know Brad's working on the... We had to do an update, which you guys didn't see because we had a bug, so that's not showing. But generally what you're going to see with the GSRs is a higher number, more consistent higher numbers with the better horses. And it doesn't change depending on the race they're in. This is their number, right? So you'll know better horses. So sometimes in a weaker race or somebody's trying to put a first-time starter in, you might look at that horse. You might claim that horse. You might say, hey, this horse has got some really good numbers, towers against the field. Or it could just mean... The horse sucks and the trainer knows better and puts them in a, in a, in a weak race. Right. So that, that could be the case. All right. Okay. Last question that Michael had was, and uh, we can, we can go to the dashboard. If you've never seen it, if you're a free user, you're not going to see the dashboard, but the dashboard's pretty cool. You can see it's Scotty's dashboard here. We've got top chalk, right? So these are horses that are 40% or above and you can sort and you can look, we're not sorting here, but you can go and check out the, all the different horses. I'll, I will tell you a strategy I use with this. The top chalk to me is the best. Now, Deb Martin, who I don't think Deb's on right now, the first day we launched the price plays, this is where the money bag comes from. So we'll go to Churchill Downs race number two. That's going off in 12 minutes. You see this here? That's the three. That's a separate algorithm. There's 10 algorithms, different algorithms that make up the long shot plays. And the Scotty long shot says, and you'll see this periodically, that they agree that that's a long shot. And it's not the same algorithm. So the fact they both agree that this three is a long shot, you know, bodes well. But here's the cool part about this. I like this three horse just from looking at this because look at the win percentages here. There's the top number is the four horse at 29%. First of all, you do not bet that horse to win because you can see nine to five, basically under two to one, and the horse is only 29%. So he's got a 71% chance of losing. So to me, this race is absolutely wide open. Now we can do some more handicapping here, but this race is wide open, okay? But the fact that the three horse has a 14% chance of winning and the top win percentage is only 29%, 
that that bodes well for anybody in this race to you know to win this race okay make sense all right michael i'm done with you say it that was a mouthful all right can i relax now i feel like i'm just like dee, 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 dee. and i've only had one cup of coffee what's up craig right on enjoy the garbage you know what that's just i just have to hire somebody i don't know about you guys i can't i couldn't fix shit to be honest with you I, i'm the most unhandy human being that ever lived i don't know what that is my dad was handy but you know, listen women love that craig if you're a handy guy they love that but they also like when somebody could just pay for stuff all right so listen I'll just break out my credit card and get somebody to help me. So, all right. So, Scotty Longshot, let's see. Scotty Longshot took two of the first three races the other day at Goldstream. I mean, that's that happens all the time. We had a $50,000 pick five the other day, or pick four, one of the two. And three out of the, the five races were the Scotty Longshot. And then one of them was the Scotty Top Pick that paid 12 bucks. Oh, there's Austin. Hey, say hello to my son-in-law, Austin. He's he's the handy one. I just call Austin when I need help. Austin will come on over. He'll help me. All right, so we're almost close. We've got races coming up. Oh, you guys want to cover Aqueduct 4. I'm surprised none of you said, hey, Scott, stop talking. Let's go to Aqueduct race number four. I, I, I'm shocked, actually. All right, so we got Aqueduct 4. Let's see. Did it go off? It already went off, didn't it? Hold on here. Race four. Did it go off? All right. I got to get better at this. Yeah, it already went off. All right. So let's see what we've got. We've got. Um, so let's look at the top GSR. Who's the top one? 65 on the 12 horse is the favorite. And he's a Scotty second pick. The 14 is a Scotty top pick. It looks bad. Those aren't big numbers. This is a wide open race, really. Scotty long shot is a seven. That's the last time I'm going to make sure that everything I handicap is going to be before the damn race goes off. So the 13 horse coming on the outside is the two and uh, going to get second over the Scotty long shot. It looks no, is this guy? Yeah. Scotty long shot looks like, all right, by the way too. So we're going to learn from some of these things that we're watching. So, Let's take a look and see what we can learn from this. Well, we knew it was a wide open race. So is anybody surprised that the 13 won the race? I'm not. Um, the Scotty long shot. Here's what's interesting. You, you could have done an, like, and I left the two out. But you could have done an all with all with seven. Because knowing that the Scotty long shot is in the money 33 or 34% of the time. It's one of those. It's right there. We haven't run it in a while, but that's where it normally hovers. So, and you would have made, you would have made money. Because you would have got a six to one shot over a long shot over another one, and we beat the twelve horse who didn't run and the fourteen uh, out as out of the money as well. So why, we'll see what this trifecta pays, but I bet it's good. Thirteen two seven. Yeah, I had thrown the two out because it was a low number, but you know maybe in a wide open race like this, that would have been a mistake. And when you look at this horse's form on our handy view, so if you don't know how to do that, you don't get this on mobile, but here on desktop, laptop, iPad, you can click on the horse's name. And it'll take you to the horse's past performances, which we call Handy View. Check out race five. Yeah, wide open. Look at that. I mean, so you have to have other tools. So you know that people are using past performances and they're like, I don't know what to do in this race, right? So Churchill 2, is that coming up? We got Woodbine 1. Look at, I mean, there's some, you know, I notice a lot on weekends that there's a lot of long shots. So uh, we can do uh, we can do Churchill Downs too, no problem. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true, Gary. That's true. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, guys, ready to win some money today? I am. I've got some money in my account, and I'm ready to win.
All right, why is betting so damn hard, you know? Ugh. By the way, did you see Monomoy Girl sold for $9.5 million to spend thrift? And but she's but she's actually going back to Brad Cox. So she's gonna run next year from what it from what I read. And she's won 13 of 15 races. You know her layoff was due to a colic, right? I had a horse that had colic one time. It is brutal. And she was very impressive in the Breeders' Cup. She's a champion three-year-old. That's what you want to see. When you see a champion three-year-old, a champion four-year-old, that's when you know that most likely that's going to be a good broodmare. So she's four for four this year. I don't think she'll run again this year. Why would she? So, but uh, yeah, pretty amazing. That colic, if you've never seen it before and you have a horse that you love, whether it's worth a lot of money or it's not, it is brutal. The horse just wants to lay down and die. It's so painful. And you're trying to get this 1,000-pound horse, 1,200-pound horse, and lift them up and get them to move. And come on, girl. Come on, girl. It's it's insane. It is intense. Because if they lay down, they're done. All right. Churchill Downs, race number two. Let's get out there. Very contentious field like we've seen. Uh, stands to reason why we need to look at other horses or look at other um, factors in here. So first thing in a race like this, you know, it looks like lifetime. They've all run some. Yeah, 11, 12 races each. The average SOR, strength of race is important here at the surface and distance. Now, what I like to do is compare. You know that this race number two is eight and a half furlongs on dirt. You see that? You can see that up here in the track diagram. So this field here of GSR is showing you only this surface and only this distance lifetime, okay? So the average SOR is going to take the last five races, just like the average SOR over here. It's going to take the last five races and average them. And that essentially shows you how strong the fields were. This is an important tool because not every $32,000 maiden claimer is the same, trust me. All right, sometimes the, we, the fields come up weak. Sometimes they come up tough. So you can kind of compare this number. And you can see that the four horse, who's got the top number with the six, the same over here, 58, 58. 50, so no difference there. There's the, Sometimes you'll see where over here they've been facing, you know, 40, 40s. And then all of a sudden the average SOR in, in the current surface and distance is off the charts. And you're like, okay, well, this horse has been facing better horses. We also know that the four horse has a top GSR, only second to the five, who has one second place finish. Four horses, interesting. Five horse is not, look at this, a wide open race. You need the five at Woodbine. And we're all covering Churchill. Let, let us know, J Justin. What up? What up, Dan? Hey, Jay. The crew. The old, the original crew. Good morning, Mike. Oh, you you did, huh? Yeah, it's 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 pretty uh, it's pretty traumatic. What up, Kev? Mister Gerling, everybody say hello to Nathan. One of the good guys from Missouri. Don't hold that against him, but he's a good guy. So, you, hey man, have a great day. So, what are you trying to say? Do you just like just want to just check in and then just jet? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> All right. So, okay. So now, listen. This is a tough race, right? So, what? How do we? What do we do here? So, look at some of the other factors. Let's look at uh, jockey trainer. We see Corey Lannery got off of the three horse, but. Ben Colebrook is a new trainer. That's what it means by being in red. And Ben's hitting at 10%. Corey Lannery at 12%. They're pretty lackluster, 13% as a jockey trainer combination. You see that? Bejarano, Rafael, hitting 12% for the year. And in the and by the way, this stat, these stats are over 365 days, so one year, okay? And Bejarano gets off of the five horse to ride the three. Who is the price play and the Scotty long shot? So now, what you could do is just do a three, four, six exact the box. That's one way of doing it, right? You could do that. Three, four, six. I mean, it's wide open. Now, 
that's you can look at changes and you can see in red Robbie Alvarado. It means it's the first time he's been on the five. Corey Lannery, first time on the four. Ben Colbrook, first time with the four as a trainer. And uh, Rafael Benjarano, first time on the three horse. And you can also see that the three horse was on turf last time out and off the turf. So why is it important to look at the changes? Because now we can go and see how this horse is done on the dirt. So in four tries on the dirt has earned 8,190 bucks. You see that right there? Right there. And on turf in six tries, 5,500. So instantly I'm thinking to myself, this is a better dirt horse anyway. So maybe over the last four races, they've, and now they're dropping this horse in class. Do you see? So first the, 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 the horse was in a race in a 58 SOR, which is tougher than what's in here. I, I, I know that for sure. On a surface that really is not his best. And in open company, $40,000, which is reflected by the SOR of 58. And now drops in at a lower level. We know the horse likes the distance of 67. And uh, now it's, it's 6 to 1. I think the three, the three, the Scotty Longshot makes a lot of sense. One of the other betting things that I've done in the past, but I get lazy. I, I really do. And, and you can't get lazy if you want to win money. And uh, so you can do, you can take the Scotty long shot and do a three, four exacta box with a Scotty top pick with a three, six exacta box. And then you could bet the Scotty long shot to win, but you bet the same amount, right? So whatever it is you're going to do, and you would do that for every single race at Churchill Downs today. And you'll probably come away with some big profit. I mean, we've seen, I mean, the Scotty long shot wins three times today. You're you're and and one of the other you're going to bank and one and one of the top two Scotty picks comes in first or second you're going to bank, okay. All right. See, I said I wasn't going to do that again, and I did it again. Six is running good. So the three looks good too. The Scotty Longshot looks good. The four had to check up right there. That's really tough to make up that ground when that happens. So I think the three has more horse than the one. I think the one, you can see the one's going to be in prodded right now. And the, the six is doing okay. Five's going to end up being wide. Four seems to have some horse. There's the Scotty Longshot right now looking really good along with the six. Four with that bad with that trouble checking up. So come on, three six. Come on, Scotty Longshot. Two's coming though. We need the six to stay up for second. Oh, we're not gonna. We're, the two's gonna get up for second, but the, the Scotty Longshot did win. Three two six. All right, so there we go. It was your fault, Scott. We did get the Scotty long shot. We made a good point for the Scotty long shot and we got that in. It would have been nice. So, but we talked about maybe doing, you know, exact a box four, six, uh, four, three and three, six. That would have paid nice. Cause you would have gotten three. We'll look at the three horse. The Scotty long shot got bet late. Was that you guys? That was, uh, that, the horse was like six to one when we were just talking about the horse a minute ago. And then it, if it would have come in three, six, that'd have been nice. Three to one over seven to one. All right. And the two horse, I mean, it has a 14%. I'm, are anybody surprised by the two horse getting second? I'm not. Oh, you did? Ah, oh, Tony, sorry. I mean, here's the thing with this horse. 10 races, so still lightly raced. The SOR in these maiden races is weak as hell. But something's changed. You see this over the last three races? Something's changed. I mean, this horse came over and won a $30,000 maiden claimer at Keeneland. So I don't know what's happened three or four races back, but something has definitely changed. So from that perspective, you, you would have probably had to look at the, the handy view in order to, to see that maybe this horse is a different horse. And what do I mean by that? Well, look, see, see these first seven races really didn't do much, maybe first five. But then all of a sudden, the last three, you see that? So... That, that, I mean, you got to go a little bit deeper to find that, but it's there. I mean, 
it's not like you can't look at this horse and say, I can't see where this horse is going to win. I mean, one by four and three quarter lengths easily and looks like a different horse and clearly wants the distance, right? Hey, to win in place on that. Nice. Aqueduct race number five. Well, we got we got Goldstream Park race number three. Do we have time? You know, let me turn on. Let me turn on my TV real quickly. All right, you guys good so far? Yeah, the four, the four did, Mike. Terrible. I I go straight, Mark. I I the first thing I do when I go on a page is immediately go to the, I don't even look at lifetime stats. Does anybody? Like I don't I, I mean some people disagree with me, but I am never gonna look at a horse. I don't care what a horse did a year ago unless there's no other current information. I don't care. It means nothing to me. But that's just my opinion. That's the way I've always played. I want current form. Sometimes you have to go back, though, with a horse that maybe is, you know, had issues, raced one time, coming back again for a second off a, off a long layoff, and you'll have to look to see how a horse is done on a surface or something like that. In that case, yeah, makes sense. So, but I, I don't use the lifetime. I go straight here to this GSR tab on race view. I like to say that 90% of everything you need to play a race and have be confident even is right here on race view, right? It's amazing. That's the point is simplicity. You can get everything you want right here. Jockey trainer. Look at these, look at these jockey switches. Sammy Camacho's off the 11, but who's scratched the 12 Miguel Vasquez scratched the eight horse. Lano Reyes gets off of the eight to ride the six. You know, you have to look a little bit further, whether that means something or not. I don't know. Paco Lopez off the one and the 10 who scratched and to ride the, the nine H one morning line currently nine to two has a decent win percentage. If you get past the four, right. And the four is not even the favorite. The, the, the 13 is okay. So what does that mean? We talked about this. This is really important. If our top win percentage, meaning in this case, the four is not the betting favorite, Then the horse that is, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me change that. Er, the 13 horse is the betting favorite right now. The fact that that horse is not the top win percentage means he's only going to win 16.2% of the time. In fact, the win percentages say he's only going to win 17% anyways. So, and this horse is six to five. So is that horse a win bet? Hell no, it's not a win bet. There are no dumb questions, Birdie. Great question. So we're going to have certain stats like the one I just gave you that are going to be helpful for you to go, this horse is going to look like the 13. I don't care if he wins or not. It's not going to change my mind next time out. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm giving you a really good stat that says this horse is going to lose 80 something percent of the time, right? This horse is only going to win 16.2% of the time. That's on hundreds of thousands of past races of, of numbers. But as far as the other stats you're talking about, Bertie, I don't, they, they're confusing. They don't, what do they really do for you? Think about all these stats you see. What do they do? Do you, do you, okay, this, 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 this trainer's 30% win on first time starters. Okay. What did that do exactly for you? I mean, for me, nothing. I'm looking at the other metrics. No, not at all, Jay. The, the GSR numbers, you know, right here. Look, at, we took it from two numbers and made it to one, right? And it's way more accurate. So in this case, look, the four horse is three to one right now and a 69 GSR and top Scotty pick. So three different algorithms are saying that the four horse is the horse to beat. And I think the only reason you're getting three to one right now, and I bet you this horse goes down to two to one or maybe lower right when they take off, you know how that works, is because they don't know how to read this horse off of turf. But this horse has got a better GSR on dirt. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's 
why won't it show? Okay, I know. Six lanes down the back to the trailer Harper Go Lucky as they head for the back stretch and complete the opening quarter mile. Up front on the outside, Bad Boy J has a short lead, three tenants on the inside. Lots along in second on the outside, Tiz Luna's racing third. No particular hurry here in the early stages, 25.47 for the opening. Yeah, the damn numbers uh, did work well in the turf, but these are these are better. And they're simple, and they're they're much better. The the four horse did Leah fell out of the gate. I mean, you can clear this horse has had a lot of horse, so if he did, and he still wins, but I mean, he looks really good right now. And you're saying he he fell down out of the gate? Wow. I mean, how much best is this horse? You can see. Look at how much the eight, the jockey's pushing the eight. The, he's already beat the nine. So unless hurting, you know, falling out of the gate or whatever happened, then what's this? This four horse. So got bet down to two to one. This four horse could get weak late. I mean, that could happen. So, but it doesn't look like he's going to get caught. Big number. And um, I mean, was much best in the race. Much best in the race. All right. So hopefully, some of you had that. He just started slow. So 4-1. Right? 4-1. Oh, so look, you could remember we talked about the Scotty Longshot doing an exacta box. Scotty Longshot with the top win percentage. Or excuse me, top Scotty. And then Scotty Longshot with the second Scotty. So in this case, you would have had a 4-1 exacta. And the one went off at 6-1. to one. And the 4 wasn't your favorite. And we also talked about the 13 horse being only a 16.2% chance of winning because he wasn't the top win percentage. Okay? You guys learn? Good job, Jeff. You with me? Much the best. Look, they couldn't read it. The horse had run on turf, so that's the only, only reason you got two to one. If this horse had been running on dirt, this horse would have been two to five. Top GSR on eight and a half furlongs on dirt lifetime. You see how we had that information? Look at that information. We had 43%. Top Scotty. Those are two different algorithms. GSR, top GSR, that's another algorithm. Three different algorithms agreed. And the reason you got two to one is because, look, it's blank here, right? Never been eight and a half furlongs on the dirt lifetime. Huge. The, this is the horse you could have played a pick five in and you could have keyed and singled all day long. If it lose, if you play a pick five and that horse loses, fine. Don't, don't stop doing that. That's why you're getting odds. You're going to make money eventually. So you lost. Make sure you factor that into your budget. Factor in losing. Don't go make a bet factoring in that if this doesn't win, I'm done for the day. By the way, I'm talking to myself as well. All right. Good stuff so far. All right. I know somebody wanted to do aqueduct race number five. Was there a good wet track number as well? Let's see here. On that horse. Let's see if it's showing. Let's go to wet. So, okay. So for those of you, you can you don't know if you click, this is on um, desktop, laptop, iPad. If you click on the horse, it takes you to handy view, of course, the past performances, but you can see this button up here, GSR plus click on it and it'll show you and look at wet. So you can click on wet and see how a horse is going to do on a wet track. And the horse has a 68 going eight and a half on a wet track. That's a really good number. Probably the tops in the field. Not even close. See? So you can use the wet numbers as well or the dirt numbers. But the horse has the best number. So you've got the wet number being a 59. So this is just overall surface. And then when you go down here, this is overall surface and distance. The highlight in yellow is telling you that's the current surface and distance number. And then you could just go from horse to horse to horse to compare it. And you can see the nine horse has a 58. The 13 horse, not bad, at a 67. But the top number was at a 69. That was the four. So now that's that's the GSR plus. So that's another one that's all pushing you towards this four horse. Fair enough? All right, let's get out to Aqueduct. Anybody want to become famous?
Good question. Good question. Which race are you talking about, Gary? An hour ago, Scotty's long shot in this race was the nine. Which race are we talking about? Goldstream Park. That's the one that got second. Or let's see here. Bad boy EJ. So what happens with that, Gary, is if there's a scratch, like all these scratches here, depending on when they come in, even if one comes in by itself, these numbers will change. And it can it, it can change for sure. All right. So you you definitely have to watch for that. All right. I know that I know aqueducts coming up here. So look at look at like the one horse has got a low GSR. So we have got conflicting information. He's the favorite. 14% to win. No way I'm betting this horse to win, win or lose. And he's on the rail going seven furlongs, which is not terrible, but in full field like this, I'm betting against this horse. He's already a long shot to if you think about it. So he's got a what 86% chance of losing. Got a low GSR on the rail, and he's not in the top two Scotty picks. So I'll, I don't know who I'd bet here. I would, you know, maybe, maybe look at this three horse. Why not the three? Is this a first time starter? Yeah, good connections. Maybe the three horse. Maybe take the top three uh, GSRs like we talked about and do an exacta box, or maybe take the top three uh, Scotty picks and and do an exacta box, right? Something like that. So, Marco, so when our top win percentage is not the betting favorite, that this horse, the one horse, since he's not our top win percentage, he is only going to win 16.2% of the time. We showed that in the last race, right? The 13 was the favorite, the 4 won easy. Okay? First-time starter is huge. Yeah, Justin, I mean, I mean, you got first-time starter win percentages, right? And these are pretty accurate. And then you've got these GSRs. So we got to look at the five horse. Five horses got a decent win percentage. Second time starter who broke bad. I mean, and getting longer distance and has a higher GSR than what he did going six furlongs. You can see right here, six, 64 compared to 62. I would think the five horse is very live, has a 15%. Eleven is a second time starter, was pressing from the inside, now draws outside. I like the 11 a lot. Just from this alone, I think the eleven. If if the eleven is tactical, somewhat maybe not. It doesn't even need to be this eleven. And he's a Scotty's second pick. I like the eleven. Twelve is a first time starter for Todd Pletcher. You know that's dead on the board. So I would probably lean against the twelve. I like the eleven in here, and I think the five could get up as well. So you could do some sort of combination with the five and the eleven. Maybe take a chance on beating the twelve and 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 incorporate those. I mean, maybe the top two numbers, maybe the top three, three, six, and eight somehow. It's going to come down to betting, but I bet you in some form or another, that's what's going to come in. So, Bertie, that website is called equineedge.com. So you can go to um, equineedge.com and you can sign up. And if you want to really follow along, you can buy the daily. It's like 10 bucks, right? And then you can follow along with us. And it's a really great way to learn. And it's so simple, so fast, and so easy. And, of course, we're all here to help you. So... Yeah, Oldie. I mean, thanks for thanks for saying that. I, I'm listen. More people need to know about stuff like this, and I'm just happy for you. But, but yeah, I mean, we hear a lot of this stuff, and you see on Twitter all the people talking about how they've done well. So, um, we'll see what happens here. But I like the eleven horse a bit, but the twelve broke good. But I think the eleven is the fastest horse in the race. If there's a big is like the five, it really has a nice closing kick. But it, but look at the five right now, like kind of in the middle of the pack, on the rail. That's a really tough position to be in. See, I can tell you that the connections with the 11 are really bummed out that the two horses going with them like this, right? Because they're having to press harder than they want to. 
So the 11 was well intended here. I have no doubt about that. And whether he's going to be good enough to hold on, I don't know. I can tell you the five is loaded because you can see the jockey's legs are forward. He's on the brakes, but he's on the rail. I don't know that the horse is loving the rail, but he's saving ground. I would not be surprised if the five horse came up and caught them all. Jockey on the eight horse looks confident, doesn't he? I mean, look at the jockey on the eight. I think the dueling with the with the the two horse. I think the dueling is going to take its toll on the eleven late, but we'll see. So we got this long shot in the eight, who's going to win this race? It looks like five is coming, but not going to be good enough. So the the two who's running good, by the way, it just really hurt the eleven. Look how much further these three horses are in front of the the five horse who's going to get fourth. That's a first time starter. Eight to eleven. I I would just hope that this is a, maybe one of the top GSRs. It is. Sixty seven thirty three to one. Oh, you're welcome, Bertie. Glad to have you. If you have any questions and you decide to to join with us, uh, always here. You can email me anytime at scottypick6 at gmail. So look at the eight. How are you going to find that horse? Slow works. Look at this. Good connections. So the only way you catch this horse is that 67 GSR. And I would bet you many of many of our players had this horse. You So you, you boxed it? Oh, that's awesome. Way to go. That's going to pay really good, Jump Paul. Oh man, Justin, you did the you did the three six. You didn't use the eight. So you're gonna see this a lot. Oh, that's gonna pay really good, by the way. Holy crap. Who got second? Who was second in that race? I forget now. Was it the six? Yeah, that's going to pay huge. What? what uh, who got second? Oh, it was a two, wasn't it? Okay, so I like to say top three, but I mean, now I got Gary in my ear. So I I, I, I'm, I can't handicap after the fact, but I mean, because look, then you could go top five because the four is only 65 and he's is 65, which is a good number. And he's also the Scotty Longshot. So you could have gone there as well. By the way, the Scotty long shot is huge with first time starters. Don't ignore that at, at all. But but um I think that what's realistic here is is we kind of thought the 12 was vulnerable from the outside. Um not getting bet, dead on the board for those connections. And because these connections, they bet their horses. And so you could have left that horse out possibly. And see, don't forget, by the way, too. The all these algorithms don't judge pace, post, trip. They don't judge those things. Well, it does judge post. It actually knows the post position and and that, but it doesn't judge pace. Post it was obviously not a factor here at seven seven eighths, right? But uh, trip, that type of thing, it doesn't it doesn't judge. All right. There's a lot of other factors. But that exacta, whoa. Like, that's going to pay nicely. Good on you. So we got, uh, oh, by the way, I, I, you know, I wanted to show you guys something. I know we've got Laurel Park. Um, oh, by, oh, that just popped up. Damn it. <laughs> of course, I clicked off of it right when that popped up. I had an example for you. Holy crap. Look at this exacta. How about that? 434.50 for a buck. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. There you go, John Paul. 8-2. How about the trifecta? Remember the 11 horse that I like so much? I mean, listen, you got to bet it right, but look at this trifecta. Remember we talked about if you like a horse, key the horse with other factors? So for me, I could have done, if I had time, I could have done something like 11 with, you know, Three, six, two, eight, four. I'd take the Scotty long shot as well with three, six, two, eight, four, right? Could have done something like that. And then I would have put the 11, done the same thing, put the 11 in the second spot and then another. So three tickets and put the 11 in the third spot. And 
you, uh, you still would have banked on a 50 cent ticket, 1861.50. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Laurel Park is going into the gate. I, I did want to make a point. The upcoming race is wrong. As you can see, it says uh, race four. So I know Brad's working on that. But there was a there was a some this this had to do with the average GSR. So this horse four be determined. This was a live long shot from the perspective of this had a good a decent gsr first time at the distance and look at the average sor a 46 that's not bad so the horse didn't end up running good the 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 second scotty pick won i mean look if the 14 horse lost this race right we're going to eliminate him real quickly look at that i mean this race is absolutely wide open anything can happen anything so but you can get some prices on a horse like the four horse, decent average SOR, really good GSR, and first time at the distance. And the reason you're getting a price is because people don't know how to judge this horse because it's the first time, right, at the surface and distance. Oh, uh, no, it's all good, Gary. Next Churchill Downs race. We've got Woodbine. So Churchill Downs race number three. Absolutely. We got it. Got you covered here. By the way, don't forget to hit the, the subscribe button. Click on the bell so you can get my notifications. And um, you can watch from your phone, your iPhone as well. And don't forget to join the Facebook group, right? And drop a like on this if you don't mind. That would be great. Really helpful when you do that. Thank you. Um, okay, Churchill Downs race number three. Let's look at that. So besides just clicking on the GSR, which I use to eliminate horses, I sort the GSR, and then I'm looking at win percentage, and I look and see the one horse who's on the rail. Well, eight and a half furlongs, that's not the difference maker. Low GSR, the bottom, 17 to 1, meaning it's an overlay, so nobody's betting the horse, and the horse is 4 to 1, and not a Scotty long shot, not in the Scotty top two, so I'm eliminating him. Well, why is that important? Well, it's less horses I have to look at. But confidently, you don't just eliminate for no reason. But if you can calm, uh, you know, confidently eliminate, then that's going to give you a better chance of winning. And then when you make a bet, maybe you decide to make a bigger bet as things start to fall into place. If I can't get past all these horses and I want a bet, I just have to take a risk, maybe play the top three Scotty picks. In this case, you've got all these horses that, besides the five horse having to uh, run at this distance. And the five is the favorite, six to five, 39 percent. So I'm not worried about that. But. How about the Scotty pick? Scotty pick differs with the, the top pick. So I'm going to look at that. So what happened at Laurel Park, Michael? All right, I got to stay focused on this real quick, but let, let us know how that went. So the so seven horse, was that was that the Scotty long shot or, or a price play? Okay, so now because look, I could just follow along and not get confused. I can look here. Look at this. The four horse. He's he's the Scotty Long shot, but he's 14 to 1, only 4% and 7% win. Now, I'm going to eliminate him in the first and second spots, but this is the type of horse that could get up for third. Okay? But I'm not taking jockey trainer combination of 7%, just as well as I'm not taking the six horse who's not in the top Scotty two picks and 9% on the jockey trainer win. I want to look at changes, distance changes, Lasix is off, off turf for the first time. So the four horse has been running on turf. Now on the dirt. Oh, look though, look. I still not going to put him in the win spot, but he's dropping in class into a claimer for the first time. 
and has a 62 GSR in comparison to 54. So most likely this horse will improve, but not for me on the win end. So I'm going to go to the ticket generator. I'm going to generate a ticket for, let's just say, eight bucks. And the, the system is using the four for the second spot, which I or the third spot, which I agree. You know, I mean, look at this. Robbie Alvarado in the last 365 days is only 5%. But none of these jockeys really is having that great of a year. Brian Hernandez. I mean, I, I think 6% and 17 tries for this connections. I know this horse is 39%. But I am not. I would never key this horse. And the horse doesn't really have any speed. But this is a big drop. Some say it's the biggest drop in horse racing. But... This horse looks really good. Only two races, improving, broke bad in the first two starts. It's amazing how a horse can break bad and had trouble in the first turn against such better horses. But the minute they drop them in class, uh, they run good. I like the two. I think the, the any of these horse could, horses could get third. I like the two. I, I'm going to say the, the two over the five. I think it's going to be a close race between those two horses, but that's what that's what I would that's what I would play. So I don't think because I don't like the six, I'm going to I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to eliminate the six. I'm going to lock the race in. So I'm not necessarily going to key. I mean, I'm not going to key it necessarily, but I'm just saying I, I prefer the two over the five personally. Race is going off. All right. So, so something like that is what I would do. But I think the four could get third. Twenty-four is fast. Forty-nine, so really slow down. And look at the the, the jock in the threes on the brakes. Now, whether that's going to be enough to get the three home, I don't know. So now he's asking. Horse seems doesn't seem to have a lot. The five horses coming on the outside. Two's trying right now, so five's going to have to go wide though. I still think the two's got a shot in here, and there's a Scotty Long shot. In last, not really running. The seven's running good. Now the two swings to the outside. So it looks like, I don't know. The five, it's it's going to be the five and the two. And the six is trying to get through. Well, the six is running pretty good on the rail. I don't know. This is a tough race. Six is running pretty good on the rail. Two's coming late. Oh, I think the two got there. Maybe two, five, six. I don't know. What do you guys think? That was really close. Two, five, six. It didn't look like the two was going to get there. I think so. I think the two got it. Well, let's check this out. It ended up going off as eight to five, but the betting favorite was the five horse. I think the two might have got up, right? I just don't know who, who got there between the five and the six. I think it came in two six five. That's what I'm going to call two six five. Race six, pick five. All right, Eric, you got it. We'll do that. We'll play. Uh, we'll we'll play a pick five. What do you guys all need here? Anybody bet the 265? Did anybody bet the two? Yeah, it does look 265. Oh, yeah, pretty clear. Pretty clear the 2 1. I, I think it's 265. They're on the track over at Goldstream Park, race number four, 2657. All right. Got that too, Oldie? You're on one right now. 
Way to go. All right, Josh, you got it. done. We're gonna we're gonna go straight there. I will get focused. Maybe I'll play it with you guys. Pick five. You get to try, Gary. Nice. I'm I'm gonna give myself credit for that, Gary, because it's probably because of the handicapping I did after the fact, right? So, but it got you thinking. You're like, yeah, okay, I could see that, right? That's what happened. Who's your single oldie? All right, so first thing I'm going to do, how big of a pick five do you guys want to play? You guys want to play, I mean, they're, you know, it looks like full fields. So maybe play a little bit bigger. 80 bucks, okay. A little rich for some, not for others. All right, trying to get my bearings here and look at my notes because I want to. I really want to make sure the theme of the show is betting, which is not something I really focus on as much right now, which you guys know because we're having fun, we're handicapping and stuff. But it's it's will strictly be the reason why you don't win. Okay, so thank you, Marco. You're leaving now. All right, Marco. You have a wonderful day. So we'll talk about that. I just had to refine my notes. I know, Scott. Like last week, what, what what track was that? It was unbelievable. That was on Breeders' Cup, wasn't it? And and we could have hit that. What did that pay? Like four or five hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more, and you could have hit it for a dollar fifty with no help, no help to the ticket generator. That was pretty insane. All right. So somewhat experienced horses at the distance, right? How about the one? Bray. Named after Simon? I don't know. B-R-A-Y. 12% top GSR, but look at look at the record. Three wins in two seconds and five tries. Now, sometimes this is the only time I'll use lifetime. I want to see the horse's record lifetime. So in seven tries... Three wins, two seconds, and one third. So obviously they think this horse loves eight and a half furlongs. And now we look and and does. You can see up here, you see the track, the, the track, the diagram right here, and it says turf and it says GD for good. Okay. And now I'm gonna look here in the condition and see this horse doesn't have much speed, but didn't run a nice second place finish on a good track. See that? That makes a difference. Some horses don't like that. Like, it's a different surface. I'll give you an example. You can run on pavement, which is maybe a bad example. Run on pavement, you like it, you're running good, and then go try to run on sand. Same thing. So you have to watch over here on the right. You see this horse has run pretty good at Aqueduct. Two races on the turf, 16,800 earned, but eight and a half furlongs, five tries, 19,800 earned, and on the turf in seven tries, $15,000 earned. So we kind of suspect that based on the record at this surface and distance that this this is what this horse likes to do right and the gsr reflects that as well 76 but not to be outdone the nine horse who's the top scotty pick has a really good gsr i mean i don't personally think there's any what's the difference between 73 and 76 there is a difference just so you know because these are actual stats based on the, the three generations of family so there is a difference okay so they're still in the paddock for race number six here at Aqueduct. Pick five. We're going to put this together. But the the one and nine would, in my mind, have to be used. Again, I can't stress enough that the nine horse is still a 74% chance of losing. It's important to know. 
I know it's the top number. Now it gets extra credit in my point because it's also Scotty's top pick. So a separate algorithm is choosing that horse. So from that perspective, it gets more credit. So, yeah, we, okay, guys, Michael, you're on, I think you're on, are you on, are you on this track here in the ninth? I'm confused by myself. Now you guys are killing me right now. What about the six? What about the 12? Are we talking about this race here? So in the ninth race, so Michael, we'll get to that. I want you to bring that up when I get to the ninth race, okay? But let's stick to this sixth race right now. You want to talk about the six horse? You want to talk about the 12? The first thing I can tell you about, to tell you is the 12 horse, that post position for, for, is not exactly easy and the horse is nine to one from a nine to two morning line so the 11 is a scotty long shot so another one that you can't like the post getting bet has a decent number has some speed so the ticket generator has the one seven nine eleven The 12 horse, two wins, a, a second and a third. So let's take a look here. I mean, this horse, I can see why you like this horse. I mean, I mean, no doubt. You see, if you look at these average numbers, though, like for the one, 60, 66, 60, right? I mean, this horse, you got 58 on the nine. I really like the one. I really like the one. 12 horse, if you look at the numbers, 48. 56 and then 58 so a little bit lower and has a wide post now here's the thing if this horse had dominant numbers and had that post then you're like oh he can make up the ground but the fact that he's got a low number and he's got to make up the 12 hole and he's got to make up the competition that others have been facing it this horse can run good and he can definitely win but it's i'm not loving the 12 for all those factors i mentioned The 11 horse had the 10 hole back at Saratoga, has tactical speed. I'm not hating on the 11. Scotty Longshot as well. I'm not hating on the horse at all. I mean, nine horses going to probably be mid-pack. Not bad. I like the nine. Top Scotty pick. The seven horse. Lightly raced and is always there. They went 10 furlongs. I, I like the seven. I, I, I like I like it. So so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lock the race right here. What that means is no matter what I do, the system can't use anybody else other than the one seven nine eleven. It can't take them out and it can't add horses. I'm saying I'm good with those four horses. Justin, you like the eleven? All right, so now we go to the next leg. Instantly, we have to use the six. So the system, you know, we got a Scotty Price play, which is also a Scotty long shot. Let's see if there's any changes. Jose Lascano gets off of the six horse, but that doesn't mean much because Irad Ortiz jumps on. 42% um, on the five. So it's a 3% number. The system's not using it, but look at the, look at the jockey trainer combination of 42. 42. Ugh. I mean, the system seems this horse is bred to do it. I don't know why the system doesn't like the horse. I don't. I, 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 I don't know. It's got a mind of its own. But I do know the top win percentage is 26%. So that's low on the seven. And it's not even in Scotty's top two. So to me, this race is wide, wide open. You look at the three horse who it's not using. I, I, I don't even need to say anymore, right? I'm using every horse in this race. I'm adding two more. And I'm going to lock it. Now I'm going to regenerate. Horses are onto the track here at Aqueduct. All right, so I'm a little delayed, aren't I? So leg three. So now we, I, I don't necessarily want to single the, the last two, 
right? So now what do I have to do? I, I, I might have to just take a chance and use, God, I got to use the 12. It's a top GSR. I got to use a six, second top GSR. I'm not, I'm using the 10. Ugh, 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 ugh. I'm going to lock that. So now if, if I had no time to play, I'm, I'm stuck. So I use, I single the 10. This is the Artie Schiller Stakes, who, by the way, was one of the best turf sires ever. And that's a New York bred as well. So 36% to win, has a good GSR, three wins. I, I just would have to single the horse. So I would single the 10. And six horse top, Scotty Pick, top win percentage. There are worse singles. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, if I had another hour or half hour to handicap this, you know, I'd probably do more. Now, could you take a risk here where I'm covering an all in race number seven? You absolutely could. Sometimes what I'll do, I'm overthinking this thing. I'm seeing this thing being wide open. Sometimes I'll just take the top three Scotty picks. I'll go two, six, seven. Watch, we could do that. So just do two, six, seven. Could do that. Regenerate the race. It might add a horse. It added the 11 in the last leg. So you can see the systems using win percentage here over Scotty picks. So you could do that. So there's a ticket right there if you want to just do that. I do that a lot. So who's better? You could say who's better between the Scotty long shot, Scotty second pick, or the 11. Who do you like better? This guy went seven furlongs. Now he's cutting back in distance tactical. How has he done at six furlongs? 8,900 earned at six furlongs. The two horse, 11,400 earned. This, this guy could surprise today. Absolutely the two could surprise in this race 10. Not going to be surprised. Oh, well, I like the two. Do I like the 11 more? These level horses just do not win back-to-back -back races very often. I'll tell you that. But it's Todd, it's Todd Pletcher, Irad Ortiz. I mean, the six horse looks just fantastic. I don't even mind this as a single. Has done well at Aqueduct as well. The hell did I just do? <laughs> I don't even know. All right. So I know they're about to take off. Good luck, you guys. Big five. They're going very fast. I would be shocked if either one of these horses was it. Look, I mean, look at they're they're sprinting right now. So they obviously both had the intent of going to the lead. That was their intent. Twenty two and, and and almost two, twenty two and one. Way too fast. So I mean, don't be surprised if who's who's really you know tax score. So three's already done, it looks like. Unless the jockey just conceded and said, okay, go to. That might be a little late. You know, and looking at these, I, I think anything can happen. I, I can't really look at one horse. The 11 horses in hand, the Scotty Longshot, I will say this. In a good position, I like that. Two, the 12 is saving a ton of ground at the rail. You see the jockey's legs? Interesting. They slowed down, but that's not going to help the two. Hold on. I mean, and look at the 11. Scotty Longshot is just rolling right now. I, 12 just could have horse, but just not have any room right now. And here comes the nine. But Scotty, now I will say this about Scotty Longshot. Might have made a premature move, which is going to help the nine get up. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully for all of us, the 11 horse wins. It's going to be very close. 
Nope, nine. Oh, 11 fighting back, but not going to be enough. Nine, 11, seven. Ah, too bad. So top Scotty pick over the Scotty long shot. And the seven horse was third, right? And that was the third pick. So, I mean, we never really had to worry. And I think the one got up for fourth, right? Nine, eleven, seven, one. Those are the four horses we used. Obviously, we, we are all rooting for the 11 horse, the Scotty Longshot at seven to one. Who got bet? Who was the top GSR? So the nine had a 73, improved on that record. Now in seven tries, three wins, three seconds, and one third. So that was awesome. The one never really was in contention. Good stuff. All right, so we've got a little bit of time. I'm going to be reading from my notes too, so bear with me a little bit. But, okay, so first of all, first off, it's really important. So I hope you guys agree with me on this and it makes sense to you, but we have to blame ourselves for our losses. See, because what happens is if you don't take accountability for your losses, like bad beat, I was right there, I can't get a break, I mean, first of all, you're just creating negative energy, one. But two, if you don't identify that you're doing something wrong, and by saying you had bad beats, you're not taking accountability, so you're not going to fix it, right? Make sense? So not only are you creating negativity, but I, I studied last night on this shit, right? So I, I had to put this. I can't remember all this stuff. I'm, I'm old for, for damn sakes. But anyways, but I think there's some truth to that, right? Because if you say, you know what? I'm not betting right. I, I should have covered my bet. How would I have done that? Instead of just saying I keep having bad luck. First of all, that is terrible. You, you got to stop saying that, right? I, I do that. You see sometimes even on the show when I go lose a, a nose, I'm just like, you know, I, I'm sitting here live streaming and I'm just like, you know, but it's real. But you have to try to bounce, bounce back quickly. By the way, everybody say hello to Angel. Angel's new. Tech one edge. So if I understand your question, Angel, so what you can do, you see here these elimination, you can just eliminate. If I eliminate this 11 in this first leg and I regenerate, you're going to see that the ticket generator can't use this horse. See that? So within it was, it takes your budget, in this case, 80 bucks, and then it regenerates and adds horses in different legs. So in this case, it added the one horse in, in, in race 10. That's how the elimination feature works. Plus, you just don't want to look at horses that you don't think have a chance. Right. No, and the thing is, is like, no, we don't, and I don't either. By the way, when I when I say this to you guys, this is I'm talking to myself as well. And and I was studying last night, and I'm trying to understand positivity and what happens. And when we don't take accountability for stuff, we're not. There's nothing to improve. Then, right? Makes sense. So. So we're going to talk more about some of the ways of betting and how you can win. So I told you, you know, we can look at Aqueduct as an example. One of the ways you can make a decision, you can be like me. So I've made my money on pick sixes. I've, I've, I've hit some tries and stuff like that, no doubt. But I've made my money on pick sixes because I told you this before. I put in my plays and I leave them alone. I can't touch them anymore. I can't overthink. I'm done. When you're betting race to race, you're, you're overthinking and stuff like that. And uh, But overall, because of my betting style, I like to have action. I'm going from race to race to race. I'll have big days, but then, but, I, but I've lost way more, right? I mean, and, I, and, and so, if I, but what you can do, so we can go, but we can stick to aqueduct, aqueduct here and let's go to race number one. And we showed race number one and two, right? You could just take the top three GSR horses in every race. So in this case, two, four, 10. In this case, it came in two, four. Do a $1 exacta box or whatever you bet. And look, you would have made $46.25 because it came in 210. Race number, and you could have played a daily double too. I would suggest that as well, right? So you could have taken the two, four, 10 over the, I would have just done these two horses, the six and eight. So two, four, and 10 times two. So three horses times two is six bucks for a buck. So for $1, you could have hit the daily double and you would have won 50 bucks or for $6, excuse me, right? You'd have made 50 bucks. You, and then you could have done an exacta box here, just the six and eight if you wanted to and hit that. Make sense? 
What up, Eric? And then, so we would have won the first two races. Let's see the next race. We'd have lost this one. That's okay. The next race came in 13-2. We would have lost that. Race number five, it came in 8-2. So we would have lost, but the two was right there, right? You, so if you, if, you, if for whatever reason, you, you covered three or four horses, you know, maybe you did that. You could have that. Maybe in wide open races like this, I mean, look, you got 35 to one over seven to two, over 33 to one, over 14 to one, you know, but you got this, see, I would have been confused here. I wouldn't have known what to do because I respect the Scotty Longshot so much. I would have probably had to use this four two, but you know, maybe you just say, you know, I'm going to take those long shots and take a flyer for a bucket, you know, exact a box. And I'm going to cover the, I'm going to leave the six out and do a three, eight, two. There I go. I know Gary, you're in my, you're never, you're always going to be in my head now, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas. I'm not trying to play after the fact. That's easy. But I'm saying that how else are you going to get these horses? At least you might have had it right there, okay? But we would have won two of the five races so far if we only covered the top three. Maybe we win another one or two throughout the day. So if we would have put our bets in early, jet and got out of here, out of the house and went out and did whatever you're going to do, you could have, you, you most likely would have made a bunch of money today only by winning two races. So that's one way of playing. Thank you. Okay, right? Got it? By the way, I showed you guys last week, too, the new ticket book, right? So the ticket book's going to be probably about a month away. But you're going to be able to, from your mobile or from wherever, you're going to be able to watch all these races. So all these tickets you have, you can go to your mobile, and you'll be able to watch them and see how each race has progressed. If you want or not, it'll show you. And then it'll show you how many minutes to the next race. And then even further down the road, you'll be able to watch the race from our site. And with race replay and all sorts of stuff. So that'd be a lot of fun. All right, let's get out to Churchill Downs. So, oh, you mean an aqueduct you're talking about? Okay. Age is definitely a state of mind. And I know based on the stuff that you're smoking, Bill. I, it's definitely a state of some sort of mind. I'm just not sure which one it is. I tried to put that delicately. I don't know, Bill. I got lots of love for you, though. Um, you've heard the term "we create our own luck," right? Well, we do. So you have to you have to like stay positive, plan for contingencies cover bets, things like that. But we definitely create our own luck, okay? You have to remember that. All right, so Churchill Downs race number four. It is a pick five. So you guys are going to put me to work. The verticals are so much easier for me. I could just play those. But I know, I can't believe one of you hasn't said, Scott, let's play. You got Churchill Downs, but you didn't say anything about a pick five. Age is overrated. It's true. There's Chrissy. Hello, Chrissy. Chrissy, I see your name a lot, though, but are you new to the site? Thank you for, by the way, thank you for your likes, Chrissy. I know, I've seen you on Twitter, I know for sure. Um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what the hell I was going to say. Let's get the pick five. We need to pivot pivot over to this pick pick five in race number four. These Yetis are amazing. My coffee is still very very hot. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Eric. By the way, please hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook. And like the show, it makes a difference, guys. So we really need your help. It takes one second. It's right there. Just boom, press it. And if you click the bell, you're going to get notifications when I'm doing shows. The more following we get, the more shows I'm going to do covering different things. And it'll be best for all of us. So take the time to please like the show. And you can follow us on, on Twitter, at Equine Edge, at ScottyPick6, and watch from your phone. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. No, I don't. I didn't think you were new to horse racing, 
uh, Chris. I, but I think you're new to the to our site, aren't you? All right, so let's do another eighty dollar ticket. We did that before. It's singling the eight horse, not surprisingly, at fifty nine percent. Where else is it going to single? So let's see. Look at the two, Scotty Longshot from 12 to 1 down to 2 to 1. Changes off turf, off synthetic, now on dirt. So why I know probably most of you don't use this changes that much, but here's what's interesting. The six horse was off synthetic and on turf. So what I'm going to look at now, I'm getting bet. I need to look to see how this horse is is breeding is on dirt. Has the horse ever run on dirt? Yes. So let's look at the record. On synthetic, three tries, 3,700 average earned. On dirt, 10 tries, 2,600 average. So in fact, this horse has actually done better on synthetic. This, just, this horse just doesn't smell like I want to win. You see that, right? I think it's going to do be not bad, though. Going to be better at 8.5 furlongs. You can see the GSR. 64 going 8.5 on the synthetic and 60 going six furlongs. Well, good to have you, Chrissy. All right, so I would single, I would single the eight. So that, that would be the ticket I would do. You know, I might depending on the GSR, they almost at the gate. I mean, look at that seven. It's not even using the seven. I'm using the seven, I would tell you that right now. And uh, I would get rid of the this horse and get rid of nobody else. All right. That would be my ticket. That's a big number to try to beat. Really, really big number to try to beat the eight. So, Doug, ran, ran still with that lead. Two's loaded, though. Two seems to be loaded. The eight's all out. Oh, wow. Look at the jockey on the two. Absolutely going to beat this field hands down. Good call on the two. Eight's, eight's not going to win this race. So, Scotty Longshot got bet. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at this. If you if so, you're asking, well, what's different about this race a lot? Well, broke slow last time out, and that was open company, and drops down to non-winners of two lifetimes. So this was an easier field. Got bet, and uh, hopefully some of you had that. Good call, Tony. I know. I, so you know the theme of the show. That's fair enough. I know the theme of the show though was was how to bet, right? So we have a lot of new people as well. I know. So you got to bear with me on that, but we need to, there's, you know, a lot of new people that we've got to teach the game to as well. Right. So just remember that, but I, I'm with you. I'd rather do that. I want to just handicap and just keep going from track to track to track. I get it. All right. All right, so that's happened four times so far where I keep I'm talking before the race goes off. So I've got to I've got to speed that up. All right, I'm going to work on that. Maybe like a minute or two before they're going into the gate, maybe you guys can just let me know. That'll help. Cuz literally my my TV's a minute late past when they start. All right? So that'll help me. So Goldstream Park I have many of them, Bill. 
So here's the thing. You, it, you've got a top Scotty pick, and you've got a 47% win. I know. 54 on the GSR and a second-time starter. One last time out against a 60 SOR. I can tell you in a maiden group, a 60 SOR is huge because the mean is 50. So 60 is 10 points higher than the mean, which is off the charts. All right. So that was a tough group. So the, the GSR just might not even play here. Might not even play. So this horse, you can see, look, it's interesting. But if you see the SOR in this on the sixth horse, 56, ran third. Then moves up to a 60, ran fourth by 10, and then drops to a 48. You see that? And wins by five and three quarter. That's how powerful that SOR is. It's showing you. So watch for that. So how do you get that? Well, look at the average SOR and kind of look at that. And then you want to look at the average SOR in the GSR column, okay? Well, I don't like the, the GSR, but this horse won last time out against a tougher group. So there's conflicting information. So that makes it tough. How about the uh, the numbers on the, the one and the, the five? This horse ran good at six furlongs and against a 62 group of winners. But does draw the rail. But it might not matter. I like the one. This horse could easily go gate to wire. That was, excuse me, got the hiccup. Oh, great, I've got the hiccups. All right, so this horse in a 62 group went gate to wire last couple of races at five furlongs. So the only thing we have to judge this horse now, can this horse go six and a half furlongs, is the GSR, which says 66. So it's a little bit less than five furlongs. And But this horse is nicely bred. The five can win this race, gate to wire, 100%. Is there anybody that can go with the five? Doesn't look like it. Five could go gate to wire. I think the one is very interesting. If I'll give you an example. If I'm betting this race, the one horse would be in the exotics for me, meaning... He would be my key. I think the one can win, but I think he'll at least be second or third. Makes sense? So that's the way I would, that's personally the way I would play that. All right. On the AQ pick five, Pat, uh, the two horse ended up winning the race. All right. Was it, or was that Churchill? No, the 13 won the race. Oh, hold on here. Excuse me. Top Scotty pick one. All right. So I kind of like the one horse. So that would be my key. So you guys have to bet it the way you're going to bet it. But there's, um, if you wanted to pick five, let's just say 60 bucks. I personally wouldn't single the three. I would add the five and the one. And regenerate. That would be my ticket. Is there anybody else that I could key so I can spread out in other races? Look at this. This horse here in race number seven is 4% to win, and he's the top Scotty pick. I mean, we're obviously got to add this horse. Top GSR is the two horse. He's 15%, so we're not leaving him out. So now I'm going to lock that race and regenerate. I like to take races like this, and I like to choose between these two so I can spread out. So who's better between these two? This horse faced a 64 group going seven furlongs, comes back at the same distance. This horse faced been facing really tough group. Yeah, so I can't separate those two. So I got to use them. In the last race, is the 15 a single? Top GSR, never been this distance, has a good number. Top Scotty pick. What, el what else are you going to single? Broke last. Last time out, went off at five to two, poor start, four to five wide. I think the 15 could be a single. That's what I would do. Yeah, when you when I have time, Oldie, yeah, you can come over here, click on the GSR Plus, and look at the wet number. It's only a 54 on the on uh, the 70 on the three. You know, so the 15 actually has a weak wet number. So that that could factor in. Five is good, nine is weak. 68. Again, these are just 
contradicting now it's contradicting some of the stuff you're doing right so you have to factor that in so maybe where a horse isn't as good but has a really good wet number that would that would move them up but i um i like the one like i said for me i would play a trifecta when i if i played a trifecta and the one would be in the first second and third spots i would play three tickets that's how i would do that sure why that's doing that but we know good luck in this race guys uh, you know Derek I have not looked at at um, Del Mar but we will we'll we'll, we'll cover Del Mar as well I know. I probably need a co-host. You're right. Or a producer. So they're going 22 flat. That's that's pretty fast. And We'll see if the five can rate because the five hadn't shown that he can rate. And the one, the one's all out, to be honest with you. I'm not really liking the way the one, the one is running and losing ground. I really don't think you're catching the three horse. Five is not catching the three from what it looks like. One starting to get its legs. But it looks like the favorite's going to win. Really, the the jockey did a really good job taking it to taking it to the five early, right? So came in three five. So Scotty, you know, Scotty top two picks. As a matter of fact, I think the six, the Scotty Longshot got third. So three five six cold. Again, it's gonna, it's gonna, Diego, you're gonna co-host. What up, Diego? Um, you know, it's it's more about it's not it's not the co-hosting. It's really more about, you know, just trying to do trying to handicap, right? Talk, do all that, right? We talked about this before. You know, it's it's tough to see. And then, unfortunately, when I'm looking at my TV, it's about a minute behind. So it's it's that's that's probably the only part. And I know there's a mix between new people. And there's a mix between handicapping. And I know some of you are experienced. And so you're like, Scotty, just handicap and let's let's go. I get it. But a big part of this game is is betting. And I really wanted this show to be about betting. I really, really did. Because a lot of us are are betting wrong. So, but we'll try to we got aqueduct race number seven coming up. So we'll go there. But in between times, maybe after this race, we have 20 minutes before Churchill Downs, and we've got four minutes. We'll, uh, I'll look at my notes and we'll, we'll cover a, a few ideas I have on the betting side so we can hit up some of the new people. And if you are new, please don't even hesitate to, to, to talk to us, chat, and uh, ask questions, okay? As far as this question, can you explain GSR and GSR Plus? They're the same thing yesterday I saw. So that they are different. So GSR is this number here. They're the same algorithm, but uh, the GSR essentially shows you what the surface and the distance is for each race, meaning... Six furlongs on dirt. Now you know what? Let's 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 do this. Let's do race number seven first, okay? I'll get back to you on that. No, it's anybody can handicap. It's true. We all need help. On, I need help on betting. I know how to bet. I can I can do this. But the theme of this show is to go from race to race to race, and you can see some of you are a bit impatient. But I, but I, but I also get that too because obviously I'm experienced. So I just, 
come on, let's just cover the race and handicap. And I get that. I totally get that. Two for two is the seven horse. Top GSR along with the six horse. First thing when I see this, I'm at least doing an exacta box six, seven. That's the first thing, no matter what. That's what I'm doing. They both have top average SORs, top GSRs, two for two on the seven. And the six horse has never been. So you're getting five to one on the six, maybe because they've never seen the betting public, meaning has never seen the six horse run six furlongs on dirt. And they haven't. Can this horse go gate to wire? Faced a SOR of 66. Probably going to be on the lead. I haven't looked at all the other horses. Seven's tactical and has that outside post. I would imagine seven's going to be tough. The five horse could improve and get in the money, but it's going to, going to have to improve. Yeah, I, I like the six and seven. How about the five? System likes the five. And there's, there's no telling. Broke his maiden first time out. Could improve for sure. The Scotty Long shot is also a price play. We've seen that a lot today. And this horse broke last at, at nine to two last time out, added blinkers. So when I, you see this in red here on equipment, that means that was the first time this horse had blinkers. I like to see, did they keep the blinkers on or take them off? So I'm going to changes and they're keeping them. Now you got a horse cutting back in distance. This is a dangerous horse. The Scotty long shot's very dangerous in here. So for me, I would probably do a two, six, seven box. I don't know. It's not that the five can't run good. We talked about this has a 3% only, but he's got his second pick, but I'm going to say this is, this horse is going to have to prove to me first that he can face a non graded stakes field. So I would come over and do a two, six, seven exacta box. And, um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come up here. <sighs> really? This is just terrible. Did that race go off? Why can't I bet it? Wager. You haven't gone off yet, right? Did this race go off? Aqueduct. Wager. Exacta box. So I'm going to do a $50 exacta box. Two, six, and seven that placed. And then I also will take something like, you know, I like the six horse. So I'm going to bet the six horse, bet a couple hundred bucks to win on the six. And might as well do the two as well because you get 91 odds. Seven's going to be tough though. Seven's going to get a good trip and it's tactical. All right. Good luck, everybody. So why they're loading in the gate, the, the GSR is genetic strength rating. And that's three generations of breeding. The GSR plus, which we'll show you. What's up, Jerry? Welcome, Pat. GSR plus shows you all the surfaces and distances for the horse. And if you go to handy view by clicking on the horse's name, it'll take you to all of them, not just the current surface and distance. Whoa, what the hell was that all about? You guys see that something happened with the starting gate i never seen that before holy crap that was intense never seen that before absolutely never seen that that was crazy what was that uh we're gonna back the horses out that's for sure I am not sure. Anybody see that? I mean, what will they do here? I don't even know. Will they restart the race? You know, Eric, I don't know because I didn't see what happened. So I don't know what to say there. I, I, I don't know. It looks like they're going to reload these horses. I think my, what might have happened is one of the inside horses might have broke through the gate and that created a triggered a reaction again with two other horses. I think that's what might have happened. The four broke through the gate. Well, I mean, 
we don't have we have the two six seven. We don't have the one or the four. And I think the one broke through the gate as well, right? I don't know what happened to the two. Did the two break through the gate? That was crazy. It's hard to tell. I mean, the, the jockeys are on their mounts. And it certainly looks like they want to reload them. Yeah, they're they're closing the gates. So that yeah, they are. So that was uh that was just a chain reaction of horses breaking through the gate at the same time. Now they did you see they left the two stall open? I don't know if it's because the two doesn't want to go through the stall or, or go through the gate. So sometimes they'll do that. You use the two six seven in your pick five, Justin. Yeah, I mean sometimes you just have to take chances like that. I I don't I think that's a good move. So three four seven broke to the gate. I mean, so we're rooting for the two and the six, John Paul. I mean, that's what we want. There they go. That sure looked worse than what it was, didn't it? I mean, it, it almost looked like the starting gate malfunctioned. Oh, the six broke through the gate as well, Rashad? There was four horses total. Oh, great. Oof. And the two? Oh, you want the two? Oh, yeah. Well, we always want the Scotty Longshot because if we're betting smart, we're always using the Scotty Longshot in some form or another. I mean, sometimes in, in, in horizontals, you'll leave the two out. But in verticals? No. And even in horizontals, I've been burned so much. And I don't know what it is. I th I've told you that before, but whenever the Scotty top pick, if it's a big win percentage gets beat, it seems to be by the Scotty long shot. Good luck. I would imagine the six is going to get the lead. Really didn't want to see the one going with the six. Didn't want to see that. I don't know that the six can rate, but we'll see. Seven is running good. Two seems to have horse. You can see the jockey is not really asking. Saving ground at the rail. Wants to go. But it's a shit show down there at the rail. I'm going to have to check back, I'm guessing. Which is never helpful. I mean, you just lost a length or two right there and your momentum. That could be the difference between winning by a nose and losing. One's done. Seven's running good, but we're going to need the two horse to get up. And I don't know. This entire thing. Uh, the six seems to have some horse. Seven's being is, is asking. Big long shot in the outside. Six has seems six has horse, but the force the so does the four. Yeah, no, that's not going to work out for us. Four is going to win the race. Eliminate tickets. Four seven. So who's the four? Lowest win percentage. Does have 22%. Uh, has a 22%, but lowest GSR and has a 22%. That was just an absolute debacle. Well, it did seem to, Ruben. <laughs> I don't know. It definitely didn't run. Well, I mean, look at the, the four horse was 22%. So, I mean, it that that's when we talk about conflicting information, that's what we got there. Do you guys look at the morning lines very often? Like, does it influence you? All right. So, when you see the morning line here, are you influenced by it? You know, I know a lot of top handicappers that try not even to look at the morning line which is impossible because it's like staring you right in the face. But I can tell you the morning line odds makers job, if you didn't know it, is only to predict what the betting public is going to play. That's it. It's not, it doesn't mean that the three horse in this case, who's three to one on the morning line is any better than anybody else. So he predicted three to one. In this case, he's wrong. The horse is eight to five, now nine to five, right? And a lot of experienced handicappers and, people in horse racing believe that the more accurate the odds maker is, the bigger the betting pool will be. Make sense? So you don't want to get influenced by the morning line. Don't do it. Don't be afraid. If you want to get those big payouts, 
don't be afraid to leave out favorites. Okay. What up, coach? Did we all that? I, I, I see. Look, at I already forgot, but we all that in the pick five we played, huh? Yeah. I mean, it just looked like that. It just did. But so you see why I kind of like horizontals more than verticals because when you, you when you want action and you're playing verticals and and you, you you're 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 playing a race that maybe you shouldn't be playing, but if you're if you play your horizontals like a pick six, pick five, pick four, pick threes, whatever, then you're putting in you're just you're you're keeping it real and you're playing the horses that you have to play. But in a trifecta, as an example, you're not doing that because you're you, you have to you you can't just cover all. Thank, thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Okay, so real quickly, um, I kept this for Happy Man. Uh, I'm going to show you that. So this is a GSR over here. They're the same ex same algorithms. And then you look at the six horse per se, and you can click on GSR Plus. Here's what GSR Plus is right here. So you can see this horse is bred for turf and synthetic. If you see that, so the the three hit the, the three generations of family here for this horse have done terrible on wet tracks. Do you see the 43 number? That's not a distance number, it's only a surface number. So you can get the gist of a horse just by looking at these tabs. So synthetic is 69, turf 65. Look at dirt, the dirt number is horrible. Okay, makes sense? Now, if you wanna see the surface and the distance, this is the GSR plus, you can sort it and you can see going seven furlongs, this horse has a 70. If you start scrolling down, you can see this horse, 870 yards is a 51, four and a half, only a 58. So the more, so if you sort it, you'll get the, this horse is better going middle distances. Make sense? That's GSR plus in comparison to just, so these are GSR numbers, yes, but GSR plus is this particular tool right here. All right, that's the difference. But you can, right now you can see like on turf, I mean, this horse is not bred for dirt at all. I don't know if this horse has ever run on dirt, no. Bennett Woodbine, which is a synthetic surface. Okay, makes sense. So I, I played the BCBC on the show last week, and we were in 30th place at one point, but it's really tough to do it. Now, I won one of the one of the tournaments at Monmouth Park to qualify for the BCBC while doing the show, but it is difficult to do. And um, but I don't I really didn't prepare for the breeders the BCBC, and I and I I don't I didn't bet very well. We had some scenarios where we could have won a lot of money. And I was talking about, do you guys remember that three horse last week I was talking about that was 25 to one I liked within the Monomoy Girl race? And I messed that up, didn't I? Really messed that up. I think we can look at that, that race. Was it race 10? Let's see. Yeah, so you remember this, this horse, Dunbar Road? So... I was talking to how I thought this horse had a really big chance, but Monomoy Girl was going to be my my single. Now four for four at this surface and distance. And then all of a sudden I got caught up on the, the eight and the nine, which I ended up hitting the exacta for over $10,000. Do you guys remember that? 10-8, because I keyed the 10, but I didn't use the three. I didn't use the three. And if I would have, so the exacta paid good, 21.30, but look at that trifecta. For 50 cents, 130, 135. That's where I won my tournaments by getting those trifectas. And that's where I won a lot of my money. So I, I, I betting, this is why, this is what the, the theme of the show really needs to be about is betting. I know a lot of you know how to bet and I know a lot, a lot of you want action. And maybe this won't change anything in the way you play. Okay, fair enough. But we're going to talk about it just a little bit. And for those of you that actually want to be profitable, don't play the way we're playing on the show. You need to find a set way of playing, put your bets in, and then just watch and enjoy yourself or go out shopping with your wife or girlfriend or whatever and have fun and then watch and see how you're doing along the way. It's still fun. And then you'll most likely win money. But if you're going to be all over the board like we are during the show, no chance, and you might have a winning day, but no chance in hell you're going to be a winning player. Fair enough? I'm not preaching to you guys. I can see some of you going, Scott, I'm not, I'm just saying this is the truth. We're, we're calling it like it is. Scotty's 
top win percentages are completely different than the um, Scotty picks. Yeah, it's a different algorithm. Completely different. Not even close. Was never made the same. Scotty's top pick has a way better ROI than the top win percentage, but the win percentage is a point better. So they're because they look at things different, when they match up, that's a good sign. I know, Eric. I, you know, I was a little mad at myself, but I'm not the best better in the world. I just really am not. I've won my tournaments by trifectas. I can tell you that. But since they took away the $2 pick six, it really kind of wiped me out because I'm an overthinker. The truth is you don't have to handicap as much now that you have this site. Take the time aside, like work hard at trying to be a better better. And what is your, what is, how are you going to bet? What do you gravitate towards? Do you gravitate towards trifectas, horizontals, and stick to it. If you're going to be all over the place and you think you're going to be a winning horse player, you're absolutely fooling yourself. Not going to happen. So like at Woodbine here, you've got, I mean, they they somewhat agree. I mean, look, the top win percentage of the three horse at 24%. I know they've gone off and, and I'm looking, but thanks, coach. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I, listen, I'm talking to myself. When, okay, so Gary, you're saying that what do you do when Scotty's top three are totally different than the top four GSR horses? Okay. Um, pray, guess, formulate a, a, a good play. I mean, Scotty Longshot is a price play as well. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you do. I mean, you, right, your guess is as good as mine. Eliminate horses that don't look like they have a good chance, like the one horse, and eliminate him. So the five horse, 4% horse, not going to win because it looks like, is that the nine? Well, that's close. I think the five got it. Four, but look, I mean, I'm not hating on my handicap in there. Did we not talk about this? Like a wide open race. I don't know who got second, but it looked like the five won the race. Punt. <laughs> exactly. I mean, really, though. Right? I mean, we've had some brain surgeons send me some, like, why did you unsubscribe? I'm not winning. Interesting. Think about that for a second. This this tool, all the information is here. The only thing we have not given you yet, and it's coming, and more, is the simulated race so you can look at pace. Fair enough. You want to criticize us and say you're going to come back after we have that? Makes I understand. And that's coming. Other than that, the information you need is here. It's the decision-making that we make, right? I mean... I wouldn't have won this race. I wouldn't know what the hell to do. I mean, I, I can try a trifecta here. For I'll even put 100 bucks. It's still not going to hit it. How is it going to choose the five? I doubt it's going to have the five. Look, it didn't even use the five. <laughs> I did a $100 trifecta. You say, it's just too hard. I know. Churchill Downs. So that's a way of doing it, Chrissy, for sure. Wheeled trifectas. And uh, yeah, exactly. That's not a bad that's not a bad idea. I like to sometimes I'll wheel like I'll will take one horse out of here. I'll take the Scotty Longshot in this example. Getting bet a little bit, ten percent when the seven is is only um, thirty percent, and I'll wheel this horse in the top spot, and I'll wheel him in the second spot, wheel him in the third spot, right? So in six over all with all, or I might just come back and do what we talked about: do a six-two exacta box and a seven-six exacta box, or I'll come back and do a two-seven with two-seven with six. This is a wide open race. These horses are experienced. Let's look at the average SOR. This this might help. So you can see the six horsemen faking weaker facing weaker competition with a 46 in comparison with the four. And the four is not even in the top two, Scotty. Anybody gonna be surprised if this horse runs good today? Looks like this horse does better though. On the dirt was uh the see 54. No, face an easier group. No, 54 group. So that was nine furlongs, two back. Then went eight and a half and didn't run good. 
So is this horse okay? Never a factor in the race. Coming back at the same level. Now, this horse has done very well at Churchill. Maybe the horse didn't like Keeneland. That's a possibility. Horse was never a factor in that last race. Why? I, I don't. I I I think could make maybe coming back with this horse is a possibility. Tom uh, Tom Vance is only six percent for the year. Right. So this horse faced an easier group last time out and ran like hell at seven to two. And I mean, honestly, think about it. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you whether this horse, all I can tell you is this horse is 22%. I could not tell you whether this horse is going to win or come in last. No way of doing it. No way. Now, maybe the system knows because it, it's, you know, it's an AI. It's a possibility. All right, so I know the race is gone, but I just thought I'd make that point. What do you guys need to win anyways? There, but it's a tenuous lead. Here comes Aftrick. He's the super one. County court down the center of the track. 16th pole. Red Bull and Drew. Still so you got four horses on the wire, kind of like we talked about. The four is going to probably get second to the six. So six, four, three. So the four ended up running good. And look, at there's four horses at the wire. And the system said that that's what the race looked like. And the, and that was the Scotty Longshot we talked about that won the race. So now it just comes down to betting. So, listen, there are a lot of us handicapped a long time. And I've done well I've, and I've done bad. And I know how to use the program. and But sometimes... The system's just telling us the race is wide open. And you can choose to bet that when the metrics don't line up. That's your choice. Or you can choose to pass on the race and move on. Or what you can do is do what I said before. Take one track, play the exact same way, all the races, go have a, a good day. And then and then you didn't overthink anything. You played the same way. And if it was your day, you'll win good. And if not, you'll lose. But overall, if you stay consistent with the way you're playing, you'll win. I mean, we've seen where people are covering the top three GSRs and just crushing. But Scotty Longshot won. Again, you could take the Scotty Longshot with, with I mean, I couldn't have come up with the four personally. I, I had no idea. But I would, have a, I would have had to bet right. I know I would have bet the six to win for sure. I do that a lot. Why am I not going to take the Scotty long shot to win? I'm going to do that almost every time unless I'm really know that the horse can't win. Then at the very least, I'll put him at least in the money. Make sense. All right. You know, thank you, Jerry, for that. It's so funny that I know. Well, I see. I know that some of the ADWs give the form for free, right? So, they give it for free. I would just say this, and I, I genuinely, this is not me being biased towards this product. I, there's no way I'm not using the best thing out there and the fastest thing out there, like for almost no amount of money, because you're betting your hard earned money. You need the best tools you can get in fast. Also, what is your time worth? Do you really want to start from scratch? Look, we could come over here right now and just eliminate this, this five horse, 2% horse, 24 to 1, low GSR, he's gone. If you use past performances, you would have to look through that first and take your time, which adds up times hundreds of horses you're handicapping in a day, and do that math. It's not worth it. From that perspective alone, I think we've created a great product. Oh... We will definitely cover Del Mar, guys. We'll do a pick five, early pick five. I'm going to get involved in that with you guys. Um, yeah, you can get uh, free PPs. You know, but hey, listen, you know, to each his own, they don't compare to this. Like, not even close. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I've some people have tried to call me out on, on Twitter a few times and a few of you know the story, but I had one, one guy and I said to him, 
look, he just kept putting down the product. And what was ironic about it was he'd never even used it. And I said, look, I'll give you 10 to one odds, thousand bucks. You put up a thousand, I'll put up 10. Said, let's just pick the winner. I don't even care about the mutual. It doesn't even matter. Just pick the winner. Of course, he didn't take the bet. I'll do that all day long with anybody, anytime, because that's how this is. A, this is an artificial intelligence algorithm. How are you going to beat a computer? You're just never going to do it consistently. It's not going to happen. Maybe on a day, maybe one track. Right. Gulfstream Park, they're at the gate for race number three. You ask and you shall receive. Let's just see what the GSR. Okay, there's going to be less preaching on this show now. We're going to be going to the handicapping. So if any of you have any specific things you want to talk about on the betting side, you'll have to ask me. Just stay optimistic. Don't stay down. No negative energy. All right? So one way of handicapping this is you're looking at the average SOR and you can see that the two horse pretty much dominates on the strength that he's been facing as well has earned $91,000 at this surface and distance, but he's only a two 5% horse, but the top 1% is only 30 as they go into the gate. And it, this two horse is also Scotty's second pick. It's a wide open race. There's a lot of speed in here. Who comes from behind? The three has been facing good competition. Two horses tactical. Cuts back in distance. Six furlongs has done okay. A lot of speed in this race. Seven's going to get a good trip and is tactical and facing easier competition. I think the seven, the favorite, uh, it, is the horse to beat. And I would come, you know, I'd come back with maybe the two and the five for second. That's what I would do. I'm not familiar with HDR. Yeah, all that ink too. You don't have to worry about the ink anymore. That's for sure, Chrissy. Yeah, that's a good point, Steve, too. Like, you could do yourself a favor. Look at all the past races. Don't take my word for it. Look at the past seven days. We allow you to look at that. Go look at that stuff and see how it does. We talked about this being a wide open race, right? You got the Scotty Long, the second pick on the rail. We talked about that horse not having good numbers. And look at it. And then here comes the uh, the one horse on the outside. And But I, it's going to be close, really close. And here comes the three last minute. But the, I think the two is going to hold on. It's close. The one got it. One, two, three. Look at, but we said it's a wide open race. That two horse ran good. We talked about that. Look at, had had a good number. And the one horse had a 22%. We saw that with the last race there where wasn't the top two Scotty. The, look at the GSRs are wide open. There's no advantage in the GSRs here. Plus these horses are experienced. Right? And the two ran good and got bet. And we saw the two horse, 91,000 earned. That dominates. You see this total right here? In five races at this distance, this horse has earned 91,000. Ended up having to settle for second. So a lot of different tools right here at your fingertips. I know. Are we talking about the two Jim got bad late or the one? I mean, look at look at this race. I mean, it's just so wide open. You went one, two, three in there? Oh, that was the top three GSRs. Yeah, but I mean, listen, that's great that that happened right there. But these are experienced horses and every one of these GSRs is good. So that just, in my mind, that I, I want to believe that's a fluke. But I will say this, is this not a situation where you want to maybe try to beat the seven? I mean, the system said this horse was a lukewarm favorite, and that ended up being the case, right? 
shouldn't you try to get a horse like this, especially when the numbers are so good and equal? Wouldn't you want to take the long shots? Look at me doing handicapping after the fact. Yeah. But it's easy to say after the fact. But 100%, this is the time to beat a, to beat a big favorite, for sure. But I also, I just want to remind you guys, work hard at trying to figure out what, how you're going to bet. Don't do your handicapping and then show up. Like, start preparing. Let's, let's all together make a change on the approach of betting. That's how you're going to make money. I want to see you guys have longevity. And, and, and us build a community that's just going to continue to grow. And if we don't work on the betting side of it, it's never going to happen. It really is not. So I want to empower you and encourage you to not, don't focus on the, on the bet, on the, um, the handicapping. This is, we've already done it. Are you going to ever beat a computer? Are you ever going to have win for, you're going to win at a 36% clip? No chance. Well, we're already doing that. So you don't have to worry about that part. It's taken care of for you. Take your time at night, study hard, work hard and figure out how you're going to bet. Okay. Aqueduct race number eight. Let's go out to the race. You guys still hanging with me? What do we got right now? We have uh, 1215 started at 10. So two hours and 15 minutes by all accounts. That's a pretty short show for us. Unless you guys are tired. You guys good. All right. We'll keep going then. Okay, what do we got? We got a pick three. The GSR the GSR applies here except to the nine horse. The, the, with the one horse with nine races. Now the system is not going to judge those nine races. The the average SOR is going to judge the last five could care less about nine past races at this surface and distance. Show me, show me current form. Okay. So if you think this is good enough, only a 2% win getting bet some faced good enough horses. A 66 seems to be good here, but the system doesn't like it. Didn't run last time out, but, but look at the post was the one inside trip and faltered. I mean, I definitely at the very at the very least, you have to throw this race, that last race out. And then if you look at the horse, been facing average of 68 competition at the same surface and distance and ran third and second. So the one horse I don't believe can win this race. And don't, oh, by the way, I don't think I've ever explained this to you guys. The win percentages are only judging exactly that. The win percentages. It's not, so if you eliminate this, the one horse right now, because you don't think this horse can win, that's fair enough. But it's not that one percentage has nothing to do with this horse coming in second, third or fourth. Okay. Remember that that's important. So if you're playing a horizontal, you can eliminate this horse fast, but I see the six, the four with the one horse probably checking back a little bit. You see those four thirds. I mean, you could do a ticket and cover. Why not do an, do a all, all one. I mean, you could eliminate the two probably confidently. We haven't looked yet. So the way I'm, the, this is how I'm going to judge. This is how I judge the two. Not getting bet, only 5% win. Look at the GSR. 64 last time out and won, won the last couple. But look at this. Drops to a 56. So the horse really isn't bred for turf and sprinting. But I'm going to confirm it with the GSR+. plus. Wow. It says that this horse, okay, this horse is bred for turf. No doubt about it. But look at this, guys. 10 furlongs is the top number, 73. And it goes down. Six furlongs, only a 56. Here's another horse that could be in the money. Bred for turf all day long, but not to sprint. So I'm not going to use that horse in the first spot. You see how I'm doing that? 12 is top GSR. Has a great number. Let's look at the overall turf breeding. A 70. This horse has got really good breeding, just not for synthetic. And from that post, you need some tactical speed, which the horse has. And I, the only thing I will say that's negative about the 12 has been facing easier competition. You see the 58 going five and a half. That, that's the only thing. And the seven horse 
Well, this horse has been running longer. Can this horse sprint? Let's look. Turf breeding is pretty good. I think this horse wants longer. I would try to beat the seven. I would try to beat the seven on top. This The GSR plus is just amazing that way. So now we're looking at, now I want to take the Scotty's second pick, the, the three. Let's look at this horse who's a top win percentage. And you look at the GSR 70 and has a decent number sprinting. I'm, right now I'm liking the three. Scotty long shot. I, I think this horse, well, this horse has got tremendous breeding. And the reason you know that is look at the numbers. They're all good even six furlongs. So it doesn't matter what distance the, the 10 horse runs, going to be good either way. I, I like the Scotty second pick over the Scotty long shot based on what I'm seeing. And I think you could take a horse like the one and two and 12. The, the, the 12 can win because of that speed, by the way. So I don't want to throw you off the 12. I'm just saying that competition looks a little bit weak. So I like, I like the three and the 10 Scotty's long shot for the top spot. And I, I think the, um, the 12 or the three or the one, the, or the 12 or the, the two, the one, those horses could come up for the money for third. All right. Oh, that's awesome, Mike. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that story too. And it's, it's good to have you aboard as well. And I'm here for you anytime. It's great. The more we build this community, it's just, it's just awesome. I love it. So we will go to Del Mar. We've got some time, though. Um, you know, I really, I really, I, you know, I'm just going to do a 310. I'm going to do a trifecta real quick. I'm going to do a trifecta for, let's just say, 10 bucks, 310 with 310. And I, I, I thought the one. Who was the other horse I looked at? The one for sure. The 12 could be third. There was one other horse. You guys remember what that was? Was it scratched? So I'm going to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to do a win for hundred bucks on the three and the 10. The three wins, I'll make 100 bucks. So the 10 wins, I'll make like 300 bucks. But I like those two horses. All right, good luck, you guys. They're loading into the gate. So the 12 horse has the lead and depending on the trips, some of these other contenders get could win this race, but we knew the horse was fast, but maybe this horse might not be as classy at this level with some of these horses and it could hurt the horse late. Maybe not. Right. That's what we talked about. So we'll see three is getting a good trip on the rail. Jockey hasn't asked yet. I don't like that. He's like getting pressed by the four horse at all. And 10 runs on late, we know that. And depending on the trip the 10 gets, oh, see, the, the three's having a really rough trip right now. And that's brutal. Now, the 10's going to have to get through. And the, the, this is the problem with coming from behind. You can see, 10 has the most horse. No question. And now, do you see that? And the 10's going to come, come up. I think the three on the rail might beat this 12, but is intimidated at the rail, but is classier than the 12. And we talked about the two horse getting up for the money. And that's exactly what happened. So a three, twelve, two, right? And the ten horse, you might want to follow the ten horse. Well, it could change in the next race, but the, the twelve, the ten might have been best in the race. Three was absolutely deserved that win based on the trip that three had, and the twelve did exactly what we thought it would do. But the competition of that fifty-eight kind of hurt that horse late. Did that help at all? I thought that was a really, really uh, good example right there. And the seven didn't run like we talked about, right? We talked about trying to beat the seven. That I forgot why we we pointed that out, but I think it was because we thought we thought this horse wanted longer, right? Not as good sprinting and worth trying to beat the seven. My Twitter handle, Tom, is at Scotty Pick Six, the number six. Ten just got stopped. 
for sure. 10 just got stopped. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. Guys, don't forget to like the show. Please like the show. Hit the bell. If you do, you'll get notifications when I do shows. And again, if we grow these shows, I'm going to do more of them. And you can follow me on Twitter at ScottyPick6, at Equine Edge, and as well as follow us on, like Ruben's saying right here, on our Facebook group. We're getting more and more. And by the way, a lot of times they'll do group tickets. We did one last week with Oldie, and Oldie hit that thing for, for pretty good money. And then um, we also did one with Justin on a, I believe it was a pick six at Goldstream Park that hit for 20, 20 something thousand bucks. I didn't put it on the ticket. I was wondering, oh, I was trying to get it in. I, I don't think I was able to get the bet in. It was the two. Remember I was saying to you guys, which horse was it? I couldn't remember who the horse was. Son of a bitch. And no one said anything to me. I was like, which was the other horse? One of them I knew was the one and the two was the other. Son of a bitch. That's what it was. That's all it was. Well, I bet the three to win. Son of a gun. Well, you know, I wouldn't have won anyways because, well, and I even, no, I did. I, I would have. Three with four, seven with 12. No, but I only had the three and 10 to be fair in the first and second spot. So I wouldn't have. But the two was the other horse, correct? I just couldn't remember the number. So I know I, I miss uh, Dave and those ponies as well, Jerry. Um, it, it was nothing to do with them at all. It was, we had, you know, we had um, Jack, we had, you know, Mike here, you know, Mike's watching from home in Florida now. And so it was a big production and that production with COVID and everything, that production was a really a big deal and hard for everybody. And so we're definitely going to revisit more shows back then. So it had nothing to do with the guys. Um, I, I, I talked to both the guys all the time. Right, but we called this race. We nailed this race, and it, on paper it was a rough race, but we, you see how we did that? That is a blueprint. If you go over this show and watch this back on YouTube, YouTube, this is a prime example of how to use the tool. I ended up working out. And even if it doesn't work out win-wise and how it plays out or if we're not lucky, it doesn't matter. Do that same thing. Three minutes uh, to where? Delmar? Oh, shit. All right. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to Goldstream Park on that one, okay? I, I missed that one. So I wanted the 10, yeah. Okay, so pick five real quickly. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this one. Uh, I haven't looked at this race. I haven't looked at the, the card. So we're starting from scratch, which we can do confidently. Uh, it's using the three and the five. We're both getting bet. Remember, I told you when the and it's getting bet when the when the Scotty top pick loses. I don't know what it is, but it it seems to be the Scotty long shot. So I'm only going to cover. Well, first of all, you have to you have to look and see superstition. Sixty four GSR, a little bit better going five and a half. So it looks like the shorter distance doesn't necessarily benefit him, but it's not going to hurt her either. Four horse. I don't see anything that would make me necessarily want to play the four. 56 competition. You always have to look at the SOR. They faced each other. They did. Oh, man. I, would, I disagree. Yo, I, I would. The four is a good long shot. Here, this horse is cutting back in distance. The one. And bred for the turf, of course. You can look at that dirt number of 29. That's about the lowest no, dirt number I've ever seen. But I think this horse wants longer. I think the horse wants longer. I'm not using the Scotty long shot just based on that right there, but it doesn't mean this course can't get third and most likely will get up for third. So maybe key the, the one in the third spot, the five horse one time 55 one time has some turf reading might be better for dirt. It's okay. I'm that four is very interesting. I know he's not in the top two Scotty or Scotty long shot, but the four is interesting as hell. You got a first time starter. I will tell you this first time starters don't seem to win uh, races sprinting unless the field's really weak. And I think there's some decent horses here. So uh, all the horses getting bet, I'm going to pass on that horse. It's not like really outstanding, outstanding breeding. The two horse average there as well, probably wants longer. 
Um, I'm going to say that the three horse is a single. I'm going to say three horse is a single. I'm going to regenerate. In this race, it's using the one and three. And uh, there's some good, that's a good number there on the five and the two. It's using the one. So you can tell the algorithm is leaning more towards win or towards the win percentage algorithm than it is the Scotty picks. So I'm going to add the two Scotty picks and then I'm going to lock it and then I'll regenerate. I'm not going to just rely on those. The eight horse it's saying is a single. 32% top Scotty. 10 furlongs last time out, cutting out to cutting back to eight furlongs. This horse has burned some money. Man, oh man. I I don't know, man. So since I'm gonna I'm gonna take the um uh, so this is a wide ass open race. Wide. You could see this horse get beat. I might just get rid of the one. I'm not getting rid of the seven, even though it's low win percentage because it's 72 on the GSR. So I'm gonna lock this and I'm gonna regenerate. Now it's singling the seven, who's got the top GSR, top win percentage, one for one at the distance. I'm going to single the seven just because uh, they're moving to the gate. I know. And um, that's it. That's the ticket right there. You out? You want the cat? Peace. I mean, he's bored. You can leave him here if you want. I'll just take him. Probably. Leave him at the Yeah. Well, you, unless you want. It's, it's, whatever is better for you is fine. Okay, see ya. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. I, I, by, by the way, if I was to add one horse here and I would do an exacta, maybe an exacta box, it would be the four horse here. Aaron, who, yeah, the four is sneaky here. I, I like the four. Um, depends on the trip. If the three can clear early and get a good trip or sit right off of, I forget who was the front runner in here. I, the five's acting up behind the gate. But I think this, the three looks great. The four is very interesting. The three is not that much better than the rest of these horses, I don't think. So we're going to need to get a little bit of luck. <laughs> yeah. Jay says hello, Tony. All right. Good luck, you guys. Break good, three. Oh, break beautifully. But going to duel with the five. So, okay, you got to let the five go. The five is clearly faster than the three. And that's the second pick I know at five to one. And that could come back to bite us. But I really felt like this horse wanted longer more than anything. We'll see. I mean, 22 flat is pretty fast. Three seems to have horse, you know, and was kind of wide around that turn a little bit, and which means the horse had a lot of momentum. So four is going to get up for third, it looks like. It's going to be three, five, four. And so the four ran good like we talked about. The five is the second pick, and the four got up for third or maybe even second. Oh, might have got for second. I hope so because I, I think some of you did three, four, didn't you? I don't know. You got the three. Top pick, and you got the five who's Scotty's second pick, and then the four horse, the horse we talked about. What'd you guys do? Come on now. Share. Yeah, so we know who Michael likes. <laughs> oh. Oh, Michael, I, I, I'm rooting for you. I don't think so, though. Um, I think I, I want to say the four got up for second, but it's really close. <laughs> Anybody have the three, four? Oh, you hope the four did Chrissy. Yeah. I, I think the four did to be honest with you. And by the way, how about that trifecta three on top? You got a box Jeffrey. Okay. Three, four, five or three, five, four would have, is going to be an amazing trifecta. Oh, that's really close. The four had the momentum, but at the five might have got the head bob. Yeah, five did. Three, five, four. Oh, Jay. <laughs> I mean, that trifecta is going to be huge. That's not a bad trifecta. I bet you could see 30 or 50, 30 to 50 bucks on that trifecta. Three, five, four. Three, one, easy. Sorry, Christy. 
I mean, good stuff though, huh? Good stuff. What did I play? Why is it saying, I thought I had like 1400 bucks in my account. It's saying I have 800. What did I do? Did I play any exotics? My bets. Hold on here. All right. So let's go to, don't worry about that later. Churchill Downs, race number six. Would I single the four? Seven single. Oh, seven. Price play. Oh, price play. I wouldn't single it. Hell no. It's a price play, though. Let's look at the GSR. Eight horse. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting information. Top Scotty pick is the 12. The two horse is the second pick. Scotty Long shots the one. You have two price plays in this race, the 10 and the seven, and the eight horse is the top GSR. And the 11 horse has a fantastic GSR and a 21% win. Are you confused yet? Yeah. How about a super effective box? 8, 11. 7, 8, 10, 11. <laughs> it's not, you, you, can't, you can't play this. on the. There's so many horses. You got the 1, 2, 12, 7, 8, 10, 11. Good luck. Ugh. Oh, you meant Delmar? We'll go back to that, okay? Because we got Churchill Downs coming right now. Um, I imagine they're at the gate. All right, so they're at the gate. And um, let's look at the eight horse real quick. Let's try to cover these. So this horse, bred to go longer, a 70, and is dropping in class. So the eight has every right to run better. This horse... Spit the bit out last time out against Tougher. Drops in class. Uh, so there's the drop in class and has speed. It looks like the type of horse that needs a lead. 11 could be tough from that post. I will say that. Drop in class. This 10 horse, I know it's a price play. Maybe in the exotics. I don't like it to win. But facing weaker horses. This horse has every right to run good today. 58, 60. I like the 7 as a, the price play for sure. I like 7 and 8 right now. Uh, uh, 7, 8, 11. 7, 8, 11. I don't like the 12 from this post. Could lose a lot of ground. Isn't First of all, this, ho this horse has got three straight seconds, but he could win, but he's not that much better than these horses, so it doesn't deserve three to one. I would try to beat him. And the two has some speed, could get a good trip. That was not the strongest competition last time out. He's one of the ones. I would take a flyer on 7, 8, 11, exact the box. Good luck. We talked about the 11. Figured the 11 would be on the lead. That's not a surprise. He needs he needs to preserve the horse, though, up front, and hopefully nobody presses the horse because this horse has only one way of going, and that's on the lead. And I'm sure the jockey knows that. But there's some speed in here. So the you see the way the horse's head's up high like that? I mean, if this horse was behind horses, it would make it tough. Now, the drop in class on the lead seems to have horse. 24 seconds is not that fast. I don't know, Anthony. How are you? Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, you guys. Please. How many people are watching the show today? I don't even know. So let's see how the breeding does. You know, we had seven, seven, eight, eleven, right? Something like that. I think the seven and the eight are coming. Seven seems to have a little momentum. We talked about this two horse. Tactical speed and uh, could be one of the ones. No doubt about it. I'm not going to be surprised at all by a win by the two. It, can the two hang on on the lead? We'll see. It's these two horses right now. Here comes the seven at the rail. That would be huge if he gets up. Eleven horse does hold on to win the race. Eleven three nine. All right, let's let's reflect a little bit and see what we find.
I mean, three horse, three horse had an eight percent number in a wide open race, but the drop in class, the speed, the high GSR, and the, the eleven horse gets it done. That seven ran on good in the rail, right there. Um, that price play, so good race. What up, Scott? I had that effect on people. Gulfstream Park, race number seven. Jockey trainer, Christian Torres gets off of the eight horse, but 0 for 14, jockey trainer combination. I don't like that, but has a good GSR. Never been this distance, has a 15% number. I mean, there's conflicting information here. No matter what, this horse would never be a win bet for me. He would be included, but he would never be a win bet. I'm not, no matter what, betting a, a, a jockey trainer combination of, of zero. It's not happening. All right. Also, this horse needs to be near the lead and might be so and has faced some really tough competition. And if you can see, what, when's the one time this horse ran good? You see that three back on August 1st? That was a 70 SOR and got second by length. Then moved up in class to a 78, no chance. Then an 80, no chance. So this horse seems to have talent, but they've been putting this horse in over its head. Now it's back with friends, and this horse should run good. Not going to be surprised by a good effort. This one faced a 46 group breaking its maiden against a weak, weak group, but did it easily. No way I'm keying this horse because I don't know the top level of this horse. But you have to use the horse, and he's got a top win percentage. With this one, this one seems to need the lead. There seems to be other speed. And 64 SOR in this group at seven furlongs seems to be pretty good. Has a good GSR. I, I, the seven is another one I wouldn't key, but I think has a look. Scotty Longshot didn't run bad first time against winners breaking last. That was a 72 group. And the horse has breeding to go six and a half furlongs. You, <coughs> you could get a price here. You are getting a price. I think the one horse makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I love playing Hawthorne. We've done really good at Hawthorne. So, um, yeah, and I love Chicago. The food's great. Uh, the seven horse. 54 SOR, started losing ground a little bit late. Another one. I, is, are anybody going to be surprised if this horse wins? I'm not. I would just – I'm, I'm with the system, though. The, probably like this horse the least. This one won easily but went gate to wire. I always give horses less credit when they go gate to wire. That being said, the very first race was a 60 SOR, broke last, and got fourth by four and a quarter. Not bad. Then moves up to a 78 SOR. Throw that race out. And then 56 SOR and wins by seven and a half lengths. I, I think the eight horse is a really nice looking long shot. Tough race. Six horse, 50 SOR. You see how powerful the SOR is? What up, Angela? You're up to 29 bucks, Anthony? Sweet. Sorry, I got to look at this thing more. I haven't been looking at the chat very much. So I'm just like rambling away. Wet tracks. So you can look at all these horses and go, okay, which one is more bred for a wet track? So we're going to look at that. 73 on the two. That's a good number. I don't, I, you know, the, the the four horse doesn't really have a good wet number. It's okay. And doesn't really have a good number at six and a half furlongs. I might try to beat the four. I don't think I really liked it that much anyways. Seven's okay. Two horse has a good, a good mud number. I think the two could run good, but I'm still not putting this horse in the top. I'm not, I just, I might do something like this. I might do like an all with two exacta or an all with all with two trifecta, something like that. I, mean, I think the two is going to be in the money. 
I don't like the inside post necessarily, but maybe the two can work out a good trip. But there's something about this too that might run good. And watch, the son of a gun's probably going to win. But over 14 connections, I mean, I guess they got to win eventually. Maybe. I keep coming back to the two. What about the top Scotty pick? 17 to one right now. This horse wins. We're all going to kill ourselves. I don't think, Stefan, I, I don't, no, I never really thought about it. Are they? That's a good call. Thank you for that. All right, so I know Goldstream Park took off. I, you know, I... I'm just, I'd be rooting just for the two who's sitting a decent trip behind these horses. Seven's like asking a ton. And the two horse is uh, sitting a good trip. We know likes likes the mud. Top Scotty pick is all is being asked right now and not really a factor. You know, the four horse is running good at eight to five, but the, look at the two. I mean, Really checked back early, it looked like, although I missed the beginning of it. But you can see has a lot of horse and now saving ground. So the two horses are going to be in the money, it looks like. We talked about that. Can the two catch the seven? I mean, the connections are 0 for 14, but the two horse, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe. I don't think so, though. Well, no, he's trying all over the, he's all over the place. Nope, going to have to settle for second. And then the Scotty Longshot got third, 7-2-1. Some of you had to have that, I would think. 7-2-1. Right. We called the two, right? You see what I mean? Like that's hopefully some of you. Did you any of you bet that? Top GSR lost to the seven horse who had a went four to one. So four to one over five to two. That's a hell of an exacta. You have that, Mike? And we talked about the seven horse, you know, pretty much being a gate to wire horse. And that's exactly how that went down. Is that top three GSR again? Two four seven. So you would have had you would have, there's an example of if you just played that, you would have you would have won. That exact is gonna not gonna be bad. I if I had to guess seven two, minimum 18 bucks. Minimum. And and maybe even up to 30. Because nobody really knew what to do there, and the four horse wasn't in the money. We definitely talked about trying to beat this horse only because we didn't know this horse's top level. That's the only reason using the horse, but you can't key a horse like this because you don't know. And so where's your advantage here over everybody else? That SOR right there, 46. Yes, he won by six lengths, but it was a 46 group. I mean, if I raced my girls, I'm going to beat them by 20 as well. Right. But if I didn't tell you who I was facing and I just showed winning by 30 yards, it looks great on paper. That's why the SOR is so important. Hey, Vito. Well, Vito, you've come to the right show. I'm glad you've been listening. I'm trying to balance between experienced people and even the experience, all of us experienced people, we need to have a, we need to bet right. So again, I'm, if, if I'm bringing up the betting side, you, you know, pick one way of betting that you gravitate towards, that you enjoy, and stick with that and then call it a day. Put your bets in in the morning, go to work. Bet one track and do all the same bets. Cover the top three Scotty, um, the GSRs. Cover the top three Scotty picks. Those are two ways of doing it, Right. If I promise you this, if you focus on the betting ahead of time and work hard at it and find your set way of playing and make sure that you budget, take your budget, whatever it is, divide it by the amount of races you're going to play and play that same amount on all of them equally, 
you will most likely be a winning horse player, right? But you, you know our natural instinct is not to do that. It's to play every single race coming up. That's what it is. Just know that you're most likely not going to be a winning horse player. Okay? Aqueduct race number nine, they're on the track. Thank you, Vito. So I think the SOR plays here. And so when you look at a horse like the seven, Scotty Longshot, low GSR, only one third place finish. Um, I, I can't use the horse. 58 SOR. So he's been facing in those three races a weaker group than what everybody else has been facing. Same with the two horse. And, either, and he's not in the top Scotty two picks. Well, I'll say this, though. The horse won 82 grand. Breaking a maiden? Eight furlongs. What was that? Oh, so one eight furlongs going to gate to wire. So here's a front runner. Can the horse get the lead? Maybe. So you know two's going to be on lead. There is not much speed in here. It could happen. 15% uh, number. Has a, a low SOR, but the horse can improve. I know they took off. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's very kind of you. I try to be. I try to treat everybody like I want to be treated, but I appreciate that. It makes me like when you guys say you're like you're hitting stuff. Like it makes me happy. I like to see that. So we talked about the two being on the lead. That's not a surprise to us, but we weren't sure whether this horse had the class, right? Because it had been facing GSR or SORs that were low. So that could come back to bite this horse late. And the nine seems to have his measure right now. Ooh, 10 got up late. 10 9. I mean, it's, is that, that's pretty amazing we could do that just by looking at those numbers, right? By looking at the SORs. And that caught, it, it caught up to the horse late. One for one at the distance and barely lost this, ran huge, good, decent number. And the top win percentage gets up late. Top Scotty Pick wins the race. Nine ran good. Three wins and six tries, almost got its fourth, right? So makes sense. So that's how you use the tools in combination with each other. I mean, the two could have won, maybe arguably went too fast early and didn't need to, was a little bit too far in front. 10 was the single, wasn't it? So yeah. That's pretty neat. When it when it when it goes like that, no matter what, now your betting is very important. How you bet this is so important, and that's what it's going to come down to, right? Because there was like four of them at the wire. Ten happened to get there, but now four for six at the distance. So Laurel Park, which Laurel race are we are we talking about? What's coming up? Because I know the up for whatever reason at Laurel Park, the upcoming races are not accurate. Is it post time in the race number eight? Okay, hold on here. You have the three to win. Okay, let's see. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the uh, the, the GSR and the horse is two for two at the distance. The average SOR is very good, 66. That competes with this field. Get rid of these scratched horses. That's a wide open race. Let's see if we can learn anything from the jockey trainer. No changes. Well, Angel Cruz is off of the two who's scratched, so we don't learn anything there. Jockey trainer combination. 
I mean, it, you don't really learn anything here. I don't think it changes anything. Changes. Lasix is off the six horse. I mean, I don't know why you do that. I mean, the horse barely loses, breaks last from the rail, and you take off Lasix. I, I don't know what the point of that is, but Dale Bennett's twenty five percent. So, what do I know? I mean, the three is one of the horses. I mean, it's a wide open race. Was there a reason why you you have the three to win? I mean, what was it about the three? You tell us. <laughs> I'm not touching that, Jay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, we'll, we we got Delmar. I got you covered on Delmar. But as far as this race uh, goes, I mean, I will say this: this horse in third race, this horse moved up into a 66 SOR last time out and one in its third race. That is big. So maybe you can use the handy view to see the competition, but the four horse, the four horse faced 68 and one and has a bigger GSR. This horse went up to 62 and won the race by five. Holy crap. I mean, wide open. This horse, I don't like the five as much, seems to need the lead and there's other speed in here and the numbers don't seem as good. So I'm not as much of a fan of the five. From the rail here, it's going to almost be impossible for this one horse to win. Don't like that horse. Six horse. This horse broke from the rail last time out, broke last against a 66 group, and and uh, the, the six horse could be your price play. I like the six. Tactical on the three. That's very good. This horse seems to need the lead. I'm not a fan of the 10. Although the horse is going to look dangerous from the outside post. And in here on the cutback, the horse just doesn't seem as uh, 70 and one easy, but I'm, oh man, this horse is, the nine is a kind of an interesting factor. It's a hard one to judge. Doesn't really have good numbers, but didn't last time out either. And, and one, and the Scotty's second pick. I don't know. Cutting back in distance. I, I, I kind of like the six horse, to be honest with you, but the Scotty long shot faced good competition, but this is a wide open race. All right, let's go to Del Mar. Let me know how that works out. <laughs> oh, you guys are pretty funny. So I'm assuming we're doing a vertical here, right? Not getting bet as the eight. GSR is not bad, but 1%. Seven horse not getting bet. Going to get rid of the seven. You know, okay. Now, mind you, are we going to be surprised if the seven horse gets in the money? First of all, when you look at the SORs, you can see this horse needs like a 42 group. Okay? This horse is not exactly a winner. The five. And not getting bet. This horse, same thing. Six horse, won last time out against a 38 group, but at least he won. Could be improving for Peter Erton. I, I kind of I kind of like these six horse a little bit at Del Mar. This horse has been facing better horses. Throughout the last race, well, 42, two back. I take that back. The seven horse is, uh, is okay. 42 and didn't run good. I don't know. I, I don't know that this horse is... 62 on the – so the, this horse could improve and be in the money, baby Gronk. I'll say that. I don't think the horse is going to win, though. 59 on the GSR. How is this horse done? You can always re refer to the, how this horse is done on the surface and distance. And the three horse is 6 to 5 right now and has speed. Can this horse go gate to wire? There doesn't seem to be any speed in the race. So it would make sense. would make sense. Seems to be an easier group of horses. And the four horse, it depends. Does the is the four gonna press? Is the four gonna press? If the four presses the three, the three's losing this race. It looks like the four needs the lead for his his best as well. I don't know. Just based on that, I'm trying to beat the three. And I'm not using the four because I think the three is better than the four. So you got now you have two favorites that you can knock out. Possibly. Possibly. If the four presses the three from the outside. And now you're looking at these horses here.
And if they do duel, who's this set up for best? The the best form right now is the six horse. I kind of like the six. Not the Scotty long shot, not the top two Scotty picks, but I kind of like the six. I don't want to single them out, but the one horse is interesting, right? This horse is tactical. Has done well, has done better on dirt than the horse did on turf. Four's a class dropper. Yeah. But ran lost by 22 lengths. And prior to that, broke its maiden. So the class dropping doesn't mean doesn't mean crap in this case. And the horse. If you look at this horse, needs the lead for its best. So you can imagine that Ron Ellis has told Alexis Centeno to, to send. And if the three decides to take back, Juan Hernandez is very aggressive. If he decides to take back, he's definitely dropping in class. This is the only horse really dropping in class. Maybe this horse can, at this level, maybe can, can rate. It's possible. Just never shown it. Sometimes a classier horse can do that in a race. So I'm not ready to throw the three out. But I'm guessing the three and four are both sending. <laughs> Thank you. You're the only one that caught it. You're the only one. <laughs> Very good. All right. Good luck. I, I kind of like the six. Two, five, six, exact the box is what I would do. Fifty dollar, exact the box. Two, five, six. Oh, I'll take a risk. Why not? Live from Del Mar. Thank you, Mike. So they are dueling. Right, I didn't even expect the eight to do that, and now the three's way back there and has never passed a horse. So what's going to happen here? The four horse has not really passed a horse. I don't know. That fifty to one shot is going to be last. Again, that's the one thing I can tell you. It's good. This is a really interesting race right now. Really interesting. I did it my way. Five horses. Inside, kind of rank, has two long shots in front and to the right side of him. Uh, you know, the three is running in hand. I will say this. Maybe this at this class level, maybe the three can get up and win. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm I'm liking the six right now. And the one horse, not going to be surprised that the one runs good. Two is losing ground, which sucks for me since I bet it. How about this 50 to one shot on the lead? I'll tell you one thing right now. Give me the give me the six. Give me the six. The, none of them want to win this. How about six five? How about six five? There you go. He's got all the momentum right now. I can tell you that. Come on, six. Come on, six. The only one finishing is the six. That's it. Come on, six. Get your ass up. Is a 50 to one shot gonna beat you? That's an embarrassment. Gate to wire. Ugh. 863. Look at that. We had all, we talked about this though. We did say this. Look at, I didn't bet that right, but we talked about this. So many different conflicting things going on in this race. Look at the only horse I threw out was the eight. 1% <laughs> horse. 52 to 1 gate to wire. I mean, he, I mean, S1 Flores, did you see how fast that horse went? How the hell did that horse it, – is the track playing fast today? You might want to look at that. Maybe start looking at speed horses because if that horse can go gate to wire – okay, here's the only thing I'm going to say. This horse was dropping in class, to be fair. Look at the SORs. 54, 56, and 54 the last three races. Got the lead and held on. So sometimes that can happen. No chance in hell I could have the horse, but looking after the fact, I could see it. Oh, six three one and lose. Oh my God, that's just absolutely brutal, Rashad. I'm so sorry, brother. Hmm. 
Yeah, exactly, Eric. You hit the all button, Keith, on the pick three? Holy crap, way to go. Yeah, I mean, that's what it looked like. And here's the thing you gotta remember too. You can say to yourself, well, and part of handicapping is pace. You can say, uh, you know, you didn't handicap that well. Or I mean, no, you don't know necessarily how the race is going to play out. Who would have known the three would have been eight, nine, ten lengths back in the beginning? Right? Who would have known the, the the four horse would stop and the eight wouldn't? I mean, come on. I mean, it's just, and the top win percentage is 34%, but we knew he probably couldn't get the lead. And if he did, he was going to be pressed. And look what happened. That's how you use all the tools in combination with each other. So, ah, uh, one three six with one three six with all. Ugh, ugh, ugh. That would have been really nice if that eight got third. Pat, sorry. That's you know, Churchill Downs race number seven. Let's get out there. All right, you guys still good? Hey, please don't don't forget to like the show, okay? And follow us on YouTube and on Facebook. And uh, don't forget to ring the bell. Click on that bell and it'll give you notifications when we do our shows, okay? But the likes really help a lot. I'd appreciate if you would do that. So Gary says if you would have boxed, now nah, I mean, you, that's after the fact, but if you would have boxed the top four horses in the GSR, you would have won. Five, two, six, eight. You would hit the exacta, which ended up paying an enormous 289.40. I mean, I'm starting to see where maybe an exacta box of the top four horses might be worth it. You know, we've seen that happen about three or four times today. Now you need the eight to race. Remind us, Keith, that you've got that eight in race number three at Delmar, okay? Want to watch that. We're going to be rooting for you. How big of a pick three do you have, Keith? So Churchill Downs race number seven, jockey trainer. Corey Lannery's off the one and the 12. The one is scratched, but the 12 is not. 12 has a 1% number, not using. I'm eliminating that. Let those 1% horses beat you guys. Don't freak out that the horse won, okay? I can tell you 100%, with 100% certainty, that 1% horse is going to win 1% of the time, Okay. These aren't just guesses on these numbers. These are actually over hundreds of thousands of past races, okay? So it's just going to happen. That's horse racing. You just have to regroup. Um, as far as chain, well, the four horse, Santana, of course, is going to ride Steve Asmussen horses, so off of the four horse, but the four horse is Scotty's second pick, but the nine horse for Steve Asmussen is Scotty's long shot. So worth looking at. Any changes to speak of? So the four horse. So I think, was this race on turf and off? All right. So we have the seven horse that's got a decent win percentage. If you throw out the 14 from that post, is the 14 fast? Very. Needs the lead. Has some class. You know, our, th this horse with a clear lead could be awfully tough. Let's see the competition this horse is facing. Not very good. This one's, this four could run good in getting bet. I can see, look at, this is a class horse right here. And has a 68 GSR, so five and a half is not going to be a problem. I don't know the class level of the six horse, but was all out of the 56 group. That was pretty good, but this is a much tougher level. Getting bet, but the 14 on the outside of this horse is going to crush this horse, so I'm eliminating the six. I don't think the six will even be in the money. Same with the, the two horse. I mean, this horse has a 61 GSR. That's all fine and dandy. Well, this horse can rate some, but from the inside post, I don't see that. I don't think the two is that great. I'm going to take a risk there. Here's another one that needs to be near the lead and doesn't really have much class. I'm you know, I'm going to take the best speed horse, which is going to be the 14 for sure, and then take the best closers, which we know the, the well, seven horse needs the lead too. So is the seven? I, I'm not liking the seven. All right. I'm taking this one speed horse, the 14. The other ones that seem to need the lead, 
I'm getting rid of them. I will say this about the two. I know I eliminated him. He seems to be the type of horse that can 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 rate a little bit, okay? But does draw the inside against a, a, a lot of horses. What? This this race over. Holy shit. The 4-1. Ugh, ugh, ugh. That is so frustrating. Sorry, guys. So 4-1. It's officially it's done. So who got who got second? Top three GSR trifecta hit at Churchill. All right, let's see what that was. So I I would have had the 14, 4, 3, and 9. How'd it come in? The seven was in there. Did you have the four, Jay? Damn, that pisses me off. So sorry. So four got it. How'd the 14 do? Did was he was he clear? 4, 7, 14. Well, yeah. And I the seven, great GSR. Wow, top three, huh? There you go. There's another one you could have won. So I, I might have overthought this, <clears throat> the seven horse. I just can't see where the seven can rate. That's the problem. So a horse like this would have thrown me off. Even with that top GSR, I would have got thrown off by it. But the record is really good. Look at the 62 on the average SOR and then a 77 on the GSR. So I and, and a 12% win, I would have made a mistake. That would have been that have been that have been probably bad handicapping on my part. And I would have overthought the pace. But that would have happened. Um well for Chrissy, why don't we just look at uh Chrissy, you still there? Maybe we'll handicap Hawthorne with you. I know we've got uh, that's gonna be a really nice try, yeah. Well, if Chrissy's here, we'll we'll do Hawthorne for her. If not, we will do Gulfstream Park. I know this is a really good GSR for the two, but 11 tries, four thirds, and only a 3% number. I just can't use it. I know, brutal, God. It's embarrassing, really, but sometimes you just can't. You just just got to move on, get better. All right, so Goldstream Park, we've got probably about two or three minutes before the race. As far as this Hawthorne, Chrissy's, oh, Chrissy, you still there? Okay, so um, so we're not using the one. I'm going to eliminate the two, although I will tell you, I think that it wouldn't be surprised if the two's in the money. I just don't see the two winning. And then now I'm looking at the race this way. The nine is the Scotty Longshot, Jack Van Berg, one of the best trainers of all time. And, but the GSR is low, first time at this distance, but you can't ignore that 22%. Eight furlongs on the turf. So I'm going to refer to the GSR plus. It's a really low turf number, but don't forget, it also depends on the competition. 10 horse, getting bet too. I mean, that's a top number, 65, bred for it. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with the four, Milburn. Nothing wrong with the three. So we got conflicting information here. Nothing really wrong with the 11 and nothing really wrong, wrong with the six. So Van Berg can win this race, but that's a really low GSR. But the SOR plays a factor as well. I, I, I would... I know this horse is getting bad. I'm not going to tell you anything about the nine. I'm just going to say this conflicting information. He wouldn't be my win bet. The 10 horse channel surfer. Now I'm looking at the SOR to separate this for me. Broke bad last time out. I think the horse is competitive at. I'm going to say this horse is like a maybe a 50, a 50. I think this horse can win at a 50. This horse was a 38 to four. So I'm liking the 10 so far. This horse, definitely the three horse can be in the money. I like the three. I'm going to say, I, I, I like the six. Three, six, ten, exact the box. Three, six, ten. I, I, I tell you what, only reason I'm not, the 11 has no speed, but I'm not going to be surprised if this 11 closes best. But I would do it like a three, six, ten, exact the box, and I would probably bet the 10 to win. At Hawthorne. 
Okay, Gulfstream Park. We had limited this down to these four horses and the one horse, 78, going, okay, seven furlongs has a 68. So never, one time at the distance, and what was it? So one time at the distance, this horse, you see, needs to be near, near the lead. That was a tough group last time out and actually rated a little bit. I, I, maybe the one's better than what he was early. I think, I think she's a better horse than what she was. She's getting bet as well. This one needs the lead. No, it doesn't. Can rate a little bit. 62 on average. Seven furlongs, the four horse getting bet too. The six horse. The six horse is facing much tougher here. It's a Scotty Long shot, but facing much tougher. I like the, the two favorites, the one and the four. Two horses, interesting. But I think this horse is better on the lead. Not going to get it here. One last time out of seven furlongs. One actually, this horse is really good. Holy crap! This two likes seven furlongs. All right, how about the wet track? Let's look at the wet real quick. But the two, the two, seven. The one, the one horse has a seventy-three. Two horses, wonderful on 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 wet and has just an. Well, that's not a bad number. Wet overall, not good, but it's seven furlongs. Hold on, really good at seven furlongs. Wet numbers are a little bit weak. Yeah, the wet number is a little bit weak on this too. Went gate to wire last time out at six and a half against an easier group. Ah oh, man, I like I, I I don't love the, the the rail on the one, but the one's coming from behind. The four horse is going to be sitting right off of the two most likely, and the six will finish. It's the it's one of these four horses. Good luck with that. I mean, I would say the four horse sitting off of the two horse, probably lean there. Good luck. How did what happened? Your exact was nine ten with two nine ten. How'd it come in, Chrissy? I mean, the one is absolutely loaded. Look at the one. I mean, absolutely loaded. I, the four has really been all out from the very beginning. I don't know why. Two seems to be running easy. Four seems to be losing ground right now. And the Scotty long shot's not going to get there for the win, probably for the money. That's going to come down to the one and the two. two. Look at the two, how easy the two is running. Two one seven. So it came in six four three. So bourbon tan. Yeah, I mean, just a really tough race. Six went wire to wire. I mean, it's not a surprise. So like the 10 horse had eight tries on the turf for a 3,200 average. The six horse had 14 tries on the turf for a $1,900 average, right? So, but, but pace makes the race. And in retrospect, when you look at this, there's not a lot of speed in this race. And I think that that, that really helped the six today. That's where... When we have the, the simulated race, the mock race, when we do have that, there'll be a little button here and you'll just be able to click the button and it'll run the race for you. It's gonna be pretty cool. So that in case we miss it in handicapping, it's gonna reveal who might be the front runner. And we might look and go, wow, this horse is actually three lengths in front of the quarter pull, you know, or at, at, in the first quarter and it'll reveal it to us. So that's gonna be, that's gonna just be an added bonus to our handicapping. Aqueduct race number 10. 
Oh, oh, thanks, Jay. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, guys. So I know they probably already started, but it looks like the 621 are the Scotty picks over at Aqueduct. And we'll get over to Delmar after this race because Keith's got Keith's alive. Sometimes when those horses get the lead like that, Chrissy, it's it's easy. So I know that they probably took off, but this horse will be right there, but I don't necessarily love the six horse to win this race, but we'll watch. Eleven nine eight. Eleven nine eight. Here in the tenth. Nineteen percent. Second top win percentage. I mean, you know when we're using this many horses, you know it's wide open. And look at the GSRs, how even those are, right? It's tough. All right, let's get out to Delmar. You guys ready for Delmar? You love me? I, I don't know who you are, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, by the way. Robert, how do I ask a question on your YouTube feed? Um, go to the intercom. Go to the intercom. And ask that question, and they'll help you with that. Also, Terry, no GSR at Hawthorne race number six and seven. So hold on. Let's take a look at why. Hawthorne race number six, no GSRs. Because it's a mile and 70 yards. So race number six. It's because it's we don't, we don't judge the mile and 70 yard races. That's why. That's why you don't see anything there. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, it depends on whether I'm winning or not, Jay. That was you on Facebook? Excuse me one second. All right. All right. I missed that actually. Okay, Chrissy, can you save a horse in Equine Edge somewhat like making a virtual stable of sorts? I'm, it's a great question, by the way. So, what we're doing is I have to show you, I'm going to have to show you staging. All right. Ruben, Mike, I don't want to hear it. Let me find it. All right. So this is my staging site. Okay. Got it. I'm going to log in. 
All right. Okay. So this is what's coming. First of all, we're going to have an EE stable, Chrissy. And, but you can see we'll go over here to um, Hawthorne race four. Now watch. This is going to be the new feature. So you're going to, you see right here, these notes, you're going to be able to click on this. And you're going to be able to type in, <clears throat> I love you, Scotty. And why wouldn't you? And you're going to be able to save that. Okay. And then when you press the save button, it'll go away. It's, 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 don't forget, this is a test site. Anyways, the next time this horse runs on the handy view, it, will, it won't be below this race. It'll be below today's race. And you'll have your note there that tells you anything specific, like there was a track bias or anything like that. Now, we're not going to notify you just yet, though. Okay? That's coming. <laughs> uh, oh, you design websites. All right. Well, you, I'm going to hook you up with, uh, with, with Brad. Anyways, so you're going to be able to go to, uh, to, to this race when it comes back next time this horse runs, and your note will be there. And I'm going to use this on literally every race because I think it's important. Anyways, that's what we have. And eventually we'll have notifications and stuff like that to tell you. But I haven't figured that out yet because imagine you have a note on every single horse. You're going to be getting notifications like crazy. So, But at the very least, when you go to race view, if you see that blue, you're going to know that you have a, that you have a note on that particular horse in handy view. Make sense? <laughs> oh... I know, I know, I can see it. I know, I can feel you, Ruben. I can feel. I got you know what? I, it's called the Ruben marketing. You should know. You got to, you got to tease people just a little bit. You got to tease people a little bit. You got shut out of race number ten, Dan. I'm sorry. You put on a schmuck. <laughs> oh no, that's not that's not true, Ruben. All right, what do you guys think of that feature? It's pretty sweet, right? How am I doing? I have any money in my account? Like I, I, I'm like misjudging my account. I thought I had some money in there, but evidently I don't which means I'm getting my ass kicked. Let's see what these wagers show. What did I bet? 300, I lost, didn't exact a box. So I bet $700 in race number seven? That's why I'm down. Three, and then I lost there. So yeah, makes sense. I'm a bad better. Like that's just terrible. All right, maybe I can get it back here at Delmore. Let's see. <laughs> hey, you know what, Jay? Hey, when we launch this product, maybe what I'll do is automatically every one of of, of these uh, boxes is going to be lit up, right? And every it's going to be all blue right here. And then when you, uh, it's going to say you're a schmuck, Jay, right? On every one of them, and you're not going to be able to. I'm I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to have it programmed in, so you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Or maybe at the top here, it's going to like when you go to the dashboard, how it says uh, Scotty's dashboard, and it says it's going to say. Jay is a, sm a schmuck. What do you think? Have fun. <laughs> yeah, they started a GoFundMe account. That's funny, actually. You're funny, Jay. All right. So back to that's it. You, I'm not showing you any more, any more features. There's more in there, but I'm not showing them to you. All right. So let's get out to Del Mar. Scratch horse. I mean, okay, first of all, we know we're taking, all of us are going to take the top. Well, look, first of all, we know this. The three horse is the betting favorite. I'm going to guess by the time this is done, though, the eight horse is going to be the betting favorite. But if it stayed like this, that three only has a 16.2% chance of winning. Oh, and by the way, the system says he only has a 9% chance of winning, or she. But... The, the eight seems dead on the board a little bit. Went 10 furlongs last time out, but maybe it's just because people don't know how to judge this horse. And that was a 50 SOR maiden group. 50 SOR. 48, that's not a no difference there. 50, that's a tough group right there. How about this horse? 
this horse ran huge at five and a half furlongs, is getting bet, broke last in, 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 the, in the last start, ninth the time before that, going short, and still was finishing up in both races. And that was a 65 SOR, a GSR, and a 60, and now is a 69. The two is extremely live in here. And Scotty's second pick. I like the two. Has a good GSR 69. How about Belize? Let's see. Blocked last time out against a 48 group, eight and a half furlongs, cuts back, 71. There's nothing wrong. Why, why is the seven not getting bad? I think people are struggling in this race. Let's look at the three. I mean, okay, so the GSR plus can help us here. Let's just look at the turf numbers all together. So the seven is a 75. I mean, that's all turf. And if you put in, look at a 60 on dirt, which isn't bad. 58 on the two is average. 72 on the six is really good. The three horse, 68. That's solid, no doubt. 62 on the on the nine, 63. 54 on the four horse. So nothing keeping me on the four horse, right? I mean, I don't. The it's seven percent is not the worst number in the world, but I would eliminate that horse. This horse, this horse has burned a lot of money. I can't use the six horse in the in the in the win, in the win spot, but I, I I don't see why this horse couldn't run good. This GSR, so this is looks like it's like the perfect distance for this horse, although the turf number is not that great. I, I mean, I'm not going to be surprised by a good effort and getting bet. Man, this yeah, another really tough race, guys. Really tough race. Ten horse. 48 last time out, not, I, I don't know, 10 horse not getting bet. 10 horse really doesn't get the pulse going. Six has burned some money. The nine horse, lightly raced, didn't broke bad in the last couple of races and has a good GSR. I like the nine. Peter Miller, Pratt. <coughs> You're getting eight to one right now on Pratt. I like it. All right, good luck. So you need the eight. So Keith is on the eight. Single to the eight, Keith? Oh, that's brutal. Sweet, Leah. Way to go. All right, so Keith is rooting for the eight. Scotty top pick, who's really running nice, sitting in fourth right now off of the one. Four is running good, but didn't really have a – turf was just okay. Wasn't a bad 7%, but – I mean, that's not the worst-looking long shot in the world, but I liked the seven over the four. Six is pretty far back. They're not 22 and three. It looks like they're doing it pretty easy. So I don't know if it's really that fast. Nine horse really seems to have a lot of horse. Ten is already, already um, falling back. Two is good. You know, I don't like the way the eight's being shoved, but he's moving. Could the four go gate to wire? I mean, that's certainly a really strong possibility right now. Six is coming wide. We talked about that horse being in the money, but no way this horse gets the win. I don't know that you're catching the four. No. Wow. Lulled them to sleep. Wow, look at that. Four, eight, two. Pace, 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 pace. Sorry, Keith. I mean, this horse took that speed, sprinting, stretched out. I mean, the only case I can make is it was 45 in these races, but didn't really run that great, but broke bad and then stretched out and got a 58 and, and ran decent. 7%, 8 got second. I mean, if you're going to cover an all, then you can definitely get to that horse.
You played the you played the four the four, Sammy. You know why it makes sense to like kind of like not try to hit things cold unless you really love love a horse is because you're seeing like we're covering a lot of races and we've done good today, but they're rough. And so by by being careful and boxing stuff or covering your bet is a really smart way of going. Yeah, Baltus, Baltus on the turf. I missed that. Was that that was Baltus, huh? It sure was. <laughs> I know. Oh, sorry, Keith. We we're rooting for you. All right, Churchill Downs. Do we have any time on Churchill Downs for race number eight? Okay, a little bit. Let's, let's do it. Let's look. Hey, the tools. The tool is definitely a huge help, man. But you're making those. You're making the decisions. We all are making the decisions. So you're. It's nice to see you. You're. You're doing better because uh, you're making good calls right now. Have a set way of doing things, though. Like find a set routine the way you want to play. Pick four at Churchill? I mean, we can do that, but let me look at this. The top damn win percentage is 19%. I mean, F me. <laughs> but there's opportunities with that too, right? So because it's so tough, first off, I'm just going to do an $80 one, and it's it's using almost everybody breathing. Who can we eliminate? Nobody in here. I'm matter of fact, in fact, I'm worried about not using the eight. It's got a seven percent number. One last time out. I'm gonna use the eight and lock the race and generate. Then two and four. We talked about that race, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, there you go. Seventy two dollar play. I wouldn't even know what else to tell you to do. Maybe add the two, the Scotty Long shot. Yeah, look at the three and 82. Oh, shit. Maybe the three and 10 in this last race, if you have the money to add that. You, you know what I mean? I know it just took off, but two, three, 10. I mean, you could add that as well. You just won your contest, Dan? Sweet. Way to go. That's awesome. Yeah, way to go, Dan. So we got a duel here between the seven and the nine horse. Nine seems to have the seven's measure and the eight's going to. So if you've got a seven, eight, nine in any way, I'm not sure what the numbers were. I can't remember. Nine, seven, eight. All right, let's see. Well, I mean, we, we had the nine. Well, so look, at we, we definitely identified that the race was wide open. Lowest GSR, but had an 8%. Is that the horse we added last? Or no, it was the eight, wasn't it? I don't know, man. But yeah, 
Say what I mean? 19% with the top horse. The nine horse, you know, it, this is an interesting play, but I noticed that, you know, maybe in a race that looks wide open, take the horse that's doing something for the first time. It's not all time, but it seems to be an angle. Yeah, wide open race. 14 to 1 if you covered in all. Remington Park early pick five? Sure, Tony. Is it coming up soon or do we have time? All right, because we can help Chrissy handicap this race number two at Hawthorne if it's not gone off yet. Did I miss it? So does somebody have that horse in there? Nice, Mary. Way to go. Yeah, this pick three is going to pay big. So I think the average SOR plays in here. We, we've seen this already. So the six horse, I know he's top Scotty. I know he's top win percentage, but only 24%. And then holy shit, look at this. Like the next top is 9%. Like you're going to get a price here no matter what. And the thing is, in the last five races in which the average SOR is judging here at eight and a half on the turf, this horse has been facing 48 group of 48. That's low. So now we have conflicting information. So I think this horse is worth beating. I know he's top Scotty. I know he's top win percentage. But Chrissy, you're really going out on a ledge here by saying nobody stands out to you. Now you sound like me, Chrissy. Chrissy, look, look at this race. Chrissy says, nobody really stands out to me. <laughs> I'm just busting your chops. <laughs> All right. What do you do here? I don't know. Let's try. Let's let's try. Let's try a super factor here, and we'll play it for twenty four dollars and see what it gives us. Why not? And and watch this. You're gonna kill me here, right? This is the only way to play this. I'm eliminating the six horse from the top spot. I'm putting an X through it, and then I'm locking the race, and I'm gonna regenerate. Do you see what it just did? So now it's saying the three, nine, 11. But I don't know that I can leave the Scotty long shot out. It's not using the Scotty long shot. So I need to look at this. And a race like this, eight and a half on the turf. But look at this. This horse last couple of races has been on the dirt and not run bad. And what's interesting about this, this horse in nine tries on the dirt has earned 1400 bucks to start on the turf at this distance, 5600 to start. I mean... Why would you even put this horse in the dirt? This is why they need the GSR plus. I don't get it. So we are going to add that horse. But but what kills me about this, it's now saying we have to, it's saying, I'm telling it that it has to use the 10 horse in the first three spots, period. It has to. I'm playing it. It's not, and I'm going to say the eight horse can't even be third. And I'm going to say the six horse, the Scotty top pick can't be third. Now I'm going to regenerate. So I've, I've added to it. There you go. Okay. That's how I would do it. There's the ticket. There's your super factor. $23 and 60 cent play for 20 cents. This could pay. This could pay. Tony, give me a reminder in just a bit, okay? Because we've got plenty of time for Remington Park early pick five. Three, nine, 10, 11. They're all in the gate. 
Three, nine, 10, 11. You went with a 610? I mean, I, I, I again, I'm going to try to beat a horse like that. What up, El Novato? Como estas? Oh, that's pretty fast. I will tell you this. If you if you did use a six, and Chrissy, it looks like you did. Horse is sitting in about seventh right now and really running nicely, I, I will say that. If that's the six, it looks like it in the yellow jersey. So they're, they went very fast up front. 22 and three, 46 and four. So they slowed up a little bit, but now the six is going to have to go wide, which doesn't benefit him. But the horse on the rail, the one horse, seems to be loaded with horse. Whenever you have to go wide, like the six is going to have to go right now, that hurts. You see that? Probably about five wide. Now the one's got to get a trip, though. You can see the jockey's looking around. One got to the outside. But I don't know it's going to be good enough. I mean, just a wall of horses. So nine is slowing up. Six is going to win the race handily. Ten, six, one, four. All right. Let's see how that would have worked out. Ten, six, one, four. So we kind of thought we'd try to beat the, the six. So ten. So that's the Scotty long shot that won the race. Ten, six, one. So we didn't have that. We had the one in the four spot and not the four. Eleven to one got bet. It just couldn't. Now, if you played a forty-eight dollar ticket, I wouldn't be surprised if we hit it. Let's try. So ten six, and we couldn't get the four. This is going to pay big. But hey, either way, Scotty long shot to the top. Scotty pick could, could have done an exacta box. So, anyways. I'm trying to make it work, but I just can't get there. You would have. There's too many horses with lower win percentages that you would have to put yourself. You could have. You could have looked at the four and said, 21 morning line. I'm going to put them in, in the money." Or you could have said, "You know what? I'm just using the three six ten with three six ten. That could happen. Three six ten with three six ten. So you could do something like this. So lock the race. So three ten. So three six ten with three six ten, and then play a. We've got to put in a budget. Let's just put in a budget of twenty four bucks, like we had. I imagine it's going to hit. It. It's still not going to hit it because it can't get to that four horse. I would have had to manually put that four horse in there, so it just can't get there. All right, moving on. Gulfstream Park, race number nine, almost to the gate. The 15 horse top Scotty, top GSR, top win percentage, broke last, last time out, has a good number of GSR of 74, poor start, had trouble. I mean, the 15 figures to run good. Is there anybody else that can get in there? Oh, we need to look at uh, we need to look at the surface, don't we? On the wet, fifteen is seven furlongs is a seventy four, but just overall wet breeding three and thirteen. Six is pretty good. Three six thirteen. The sixteen is really bad. So I'm going to eliminate him. Three, six, 13, and 15. 16, Scotty Longshot, but it's a really, that's ah, 10% too. I guess you can't leave that horse out. Wet number is really low. And it's, it's still wet. You know, but though, but this, it's not been raining, right? So the surface to me is, I'm not sure if you can even, 
I think you you want horses that more have speed. I don't think that the the wet number is going to mean as much right now because the the track was probably sealed. So I would watch that. Thanks, Michael. So I think I, I like the uh, the fifteen. So because the the wet breeding wasn't that great. Fifty four S O R broke bad. I like the fifteen horse nine to five. 15, 14, 16. And the 13, not really getting bet. Slowed down last time out, but didn't break good, to be fair. It cuts back in distance and has a, a pretty good GSR. I mean, the 13's being overlooked a little bit. And that three horse. I just don't think the three horse is that good of a horse, not getting bet. So, look, at you can, this is another way of handicapping. So, we eliminated that horse. Just all together. And now look at the GSRs. 15, 13, and 12. Maybe. Maybe 12, 13, and 15. Do an exacta box. I might try to do that. Exacta box. 50 bucks. 12, 13, and 15. So I could get beat by the Scotty Longshot here. But I I'm just going to go with the GSR, top three GSRs, 12, 13, 15. Let's see what happens. Not going to be surprised if the Scotty Longshot runs good. So, I mean, 15 is <clears throat> obviously loaded with horse. The 13 at the rail seems to be all out. The Scotty long shot seems to be stopping. I would love to see it come in like this. And did you see how the 15 got bet late? I mean, 13 seems to keep on running, right? So, yeah, I mean, it could be these two horses. The six doesn't really seem to be coming. And the jockey on the 13 thinks he's got a shot. So he's not stopping and they're bumping. It could be these two horses. It certainly looks like it. So Scotty top pick's going to win. Got bet late. So it's going to be the 15 over the 13. So we hit that. Six over the 14. So 12 did not run good. So it's okay. It doesn't matter. We hit that. Because we had the... Exact the box 12, 13, 15. So that's good. Anybody have that? Delmar race number four. Abel Cedillo's off the one. But well, Bill. Well, look at Bill Spars on the uh, on the six took over, right? And Bill Spar, you guys know how dangerous he is with first time out horses. Thanks, Jay. It would have paid way more if that thirteen would have won, but still, nonetheless. So what? So we eliminated. You guys saw what we did there, right? We eliminated a horse that, that even with the high GSR we didn't like. We eliminated that horse, took him out, and then took the top three GSRs. That's that's all I did there. I didn't really look at anything else. We looked at the the wet track, but I don't think the wet played a, played a factor. So you could do that as well. Look at the past performances and see. You know what? I know he's got a good GSR, but he's a proven loser. Eliminate. We'll do that. We'll we'll keep on doing that because I think that's a that's a possible way to play. I mean, wide open race here, right? 
I mean, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. You had that, Keith? Nice. Way to go, Steve. Right on. The GSR Plus is dope, isn't it? It really is. That is that that is so sick. Well, you guys realize you're going to be able to actually breed horses, right? You're going to be able to put a sire and a dam on the GSR Plus and then press produce, uh, something like that, and it's going to produce a horse, and it's going to show you those that sire, that dam together, what, they, what kind of babies they would make. How cool is that? It's going to be fun. You guys have not seen anything yet. Hold tight. Be patient. Why are you guys so impatient with me? I mean, they can't separate the seven and the two. If you throw out the last race against Tougher, this horse has a good record on... You know what I always do? Like, compare th this here. Look at this line here, okay, on the right. You see that? Look at that line always. How is a horse Duke, if he was on dirt last time out or turf in the last three starts, how has he done better? Well, you can see his best distance is eight furlongs. Dirt... He's averaged 6,000 per start in 24 tries. 15 of them were at eight furlongs. I'm not sure about Delmar, though. I'm not sure. Seven tries, 3,900. Not sure. So now I've got mixed, mixed feelings on this horse. And the GSR, I mean, we already know it's a good number, and we know he's had this race 15 times. So it's not... You don't, in a horse like this, you just don't box the top three GSRs. I mean, nine races for the two, 15 for the six at this at this distance. You want to judge more. I would judge more the average SOR. And I don't see really that. The only thing I would, that I see here, and I'm conflicted because he's Scotty's second pick, and he's got a low win percentage, but is the five. The average SOR was 55, and he has no money in the money finishes. And people might be playing this horse because he's at Del Mar for the first time. Might be. Is Bob has taken over this horse for the first time? Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's the play. Right? A lot of conflicting information. This horse never been eight furlongs on the dirt. Ran one time on the dirt and it wasn't a bad race against a decent group. There's nothing wrong with the three. <laughs> nothing wrong with the three. Sweet. Nice. You hit the pick five at Aqueduct. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. Don't forget to like the show, guys, and follow us on, on uh, Facebook and Twitter as far out, and, and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, okay? What Aaron do? Did I miss it? Was that Aaron? Sweet. Um, as far as betting goes, I mean, you can you can kind of go to the Superfecta. When races are this tight, I kind of lean towards the Superfecta instead of the Trifecta. But um, to try to hit a score, because I know that's more wide open, it's going to pay good. So maybe I would do a $24. That's 10 cents. I would do um, a 20 cent for 24 bucks. So like a $12 20, uh, 20 cent or 10 cent, excuse me. It's singling the seven. I don't know that I could single the damn seven. I just don't know. Who's earning the most money? What about the total? The two horse, who's the favorite right now, which is only going to win 16.2% of the time because the sevens are our are, are top win percentage, but the sevens earn $95,000. That's tops in the field by far. The one horse can run good, but only one win in 14 tries with six seconds and two thirds. Maybe the one's a horse we just key in the money. Maybe key the one. Not to win, but in the money. Has a decent win percentage, too. But the system chose seven over all, 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 essentially. 24 is too big. I'm going to play 12. Let's see what it does. All right, a little bit different. It, look at it. Seven over all with two, four, six over all. This, this shit hits all the time. Camino de Estrella is where Del Mar is located? No. 
Via de la Valle, Bill. Come on, Bill. Get your facts together. Via de la Valle. The best track on earth. They are approaching the gate. I, you know, can the seven win? Of course. One last time out. This isn't really that. It's the moving up in class. How about this? Going from 12.5 waiver claimer, going up to $25,000 for Mark Latt and Tyler Bays, who's, I love Tyler. Um, I really do like, I will say this. This horse has run well in Del Mar, run well at this distance. I really like the seven, or the two, I mean. I, I, I do. How about a two seven exacta box? Right? Two seven? I'm going to say two three seven with two three seven, and I'm going to put that damn one horse also in the third spot for the trifecta. And if I played a superfecta, I would put that one in the four spot. Two three seven with two three seven. Abel Cedillo gets off of the six off the off the uh, one horse to ride the six. Bill Spar takes over. Maybe I'm overthinking this shit. Bill Spar claims his horse moves him up after losing by 16 lengths. Went off at nine to two. Floated out a bit is all you get. I don't know. Dead on the board, though. I still like the two seven best, but I'm going to throw the Scotty long shot in there. Two three seven. But Tiago Piera, uh, eh, I know they're taking off, but um, the jockey trainer combination is not that great. Good luck, you guys. Oh. So that's not a good break for the seven. If you back the seven, you can't be happy about that at all. I mean, and he's being asked. You see that right-handed asking already and is already 10 lengths behind the field. Not good at all. There's obviously something wrong with the seven. But, I mean, you've got the one and the two that are dueling. I mean, it looks, I'm going to call 20, yeah, 23 seconds flat. I was going to say 23 and two, but 23 seconds flat is fast. <clears throat> see here's the thing i know you're seeing the seven move up a little bit but that is such a long sustained run it's very very difficult for any horse to do and they slowed down tremendously in the in the second in the second half of the race i'm still saying the one horse for third bill spar is he is he gonna get the six horse uh, home First time off the claim. I don't know. I think the two is moving best. I don't two and three. We did say two, three, seven, exacta box, right? So uh, we said two, three, seven with two, three, seven with the one for third. How about that? Come on, three. Get up for second. One hold up for third. I don't know. The five horse is coming on though. Ah, three didn't do it. How about the one running huge? Five's gonna get there though. Five's gonna catch them all. Seven made a run, but it's not gonna be enough. Come on, two, hold up to win. Ah. Uh, Look at no. <laughs> Woo, seven. That what, folks? That run, that run was seriously from the backside. I'm no joke. Absolutely insane. Seven, five, two. That, that was seriously, that was like Silky Sullivan type shit. That was hilarious. I mean, that really, yeah, I'll tell you what, who's the jockey? You got to give that jockey so much credit for that ride because he was asking that horse almost, did you guys see that? Right-handed asking from the very beginning of the race. Now they really started slowing down to be fair. I mean, really, you see that? 112 and two to 125 and two. I mean, uh, they started slowing down. But I mean, <laughs> that's pretty incredible.
Seven five two. Seven five two. Well, we need the system had seven five. And remember, the five had kind of a lower win, well, 11%. So the seven ended up winning 31%. The five gets, I mean, the Scotty, this, don't you guys love the Scotty algorithm? From the Scotty long shot to the top Scotty picks, it's, it's the best. Maybe you guys don't like it. Maybe I should just take it out. You don't need that. You don't need the Scotty picks, do you? You don't really like the GSR that much either. I don't. I mean, one, two for two now at the distance, top GSR, the two horse was a second. So, I mean, if you would have stuck with the top three GSRs, why didn't you, why are you listen to me for seven, two, six, you would have hit, hit the, no, you wouldn't have hit it still because the five horse got second. So you had to stick with the Scotty picks. Oh, you had the seven, two, Tony. All right. Just, Justin, you had that. You had the super with two, four. Yeah, you did. Nice. You didn't even need to go all, all, all. Maybe in the four spot. I hit the super. Oh, did this this hit the super? Oh shit! <laughs> I, it's right here in front of my face. I didn't even see it. Uh, well, we'll see if it's gonna pay anything because it, it's it's uh, it's a twelve dollar ticket on a twenty cent play. That's hilarious. I'm like, what are you doing, Justin? Why are you playing that ticket? You didn't even need to do it all. That's so funny. Churchill Downs. All right, Churchill Nine. All right, I'll move on. That's hilarious. I can only remember things at one minute blocks. Okay. You're asking way too much of me. So four horse seems to be the real deal from what I can see. Non one is a one. So you see a non one is a one like that. It's usually other than maiden or claiming or starter. And you see a non one is a two lifetime. Essentially they're the same strength. Just so you know. Now that doesn't tell you the competition in the race. So we'll see. It looks like this is a weaker field than what, she's been facing but that's you see that you'll you just know that it's pretty equal field but it looks like the four horses dominating so we talked about this maybe take the four over the six two but you got the scotty long shot too but we've seen where you take the big the big favorite and then you take the um the gsrs top gsrs I already had two cups, but I could be in need of some more. I, it's two o'clock. We've been doing this show for four damn hours now. My ass is killing me. I can't feel it anymore. Hold on. Let's make sure it's still there. Man. Man. Evidently, my bladder's doing very well. Scott, if you do that, do what we're talking about. Like maybe, like I said, look at look how well the top three the top three GSR has been doing all day long. That's a play. It paid uh, twenty nine forty. So for a twelve dollar play, you would have made twenty nine forty. That's not bad. Um, I'm gonna say like you know take the four horse here. They take off here the four horse with uh, six two, and maybe I'm gonna well if I can get this in. Let's see. Ah shit. God, it makes me so mad. Off. Oh, all right. Well, hopefully some of you bet that. You guys are really bad about this. Now you tell me off, Tony. Thanks a lot. You're only about 10 minutes late. I won't, Tony. You stay on me, though. But when we have a, a free break, I will do it for you, okay? Time for a beer. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Actually, I might go grab a beer. Does the four have a ton of horse or is he struggling? I can't tell. We talked about the six though, right? And the two. We talked about that. Four and then the GSRs. Look at this two. Come on, two. Get second. Come on, four, two. I know some of you have to have this. If this comes in four, two and you guys don't have this, I'm going to be mad. Stay up, four. Stay up, four. Stay up, four. No. Come on. Oh. Tell me you boxed it. Got to be kidding me. I think the two got there. Did anybody have that box? Where are you guys? Thanks, Christy. Chrissy, we've enjoyed you too. Thank you so much. I think the freaking two got there. 
Wait, is that the same horse? Oh, that's not the law. Oh, no, that was. Hold on here. But I think the two did get there. Hold on. Oh, that's really close. But I think it's the two. Hold on here. Who was that? Three, two. So it was. Yeah, it was the top. So it was three. So I said four, two with four and four, six. All right. So I didn't even look to see my account yet. I won a little bit of money, huh? On that one bet. Yeah, 631 bucks. So a little bit. All right. Free money? Yeah, I was. We had talked about that race, didn't we? 31% and 43. Yeah, it was free money. But I think the two got there. It did look like the two, Oldie. I, for whatever reason, I thought that was the six horse, right? Was the six horse anywhere there? I'm like, okay, four, six. That, that was going to pay really good. Remington Park. So we're going to do a $48 play. And I'm going to do this fast. All right. So, wide open race, three, six. They're also the top GSRs. The problem with these horses is they're 0 for 10 on the win column. 0 for 10. Five horses interesting. And the Scotty long shot. And I don't think we can leave the two out. All right. That's it. <clears throat> Four, seven, eight. Wide open. I mean, it's just, let's try the average SOR. I'm going to have to lean on the average SOR here. 72 on the six. It can't be left out. Nine, two, four. There's the nine. And we need to add the two. And the three horse has got a decent win percentage. Lock that in. Get rid of these 1% horses. You see how fast we can do this? I mean, the three is either a single. I'll tell you what, this eight horse is interesting, right? I gotta, I gotta add the eight. Scotty long shot. So I'm gonna take the top three Scotty picks, knowing that the five and six and four can beat me, but you can't use everybody. Forty-seven percent. We have to take that. I'm not even going to look at it. Thirty-five percent. Twelve furlongs. So the only way you can do this is by reaching out and seeing who's bred for longer. Ten furlongs on the one. I mean, the two horse absolutely wants to go long. Three is okay. This guy is okay. This guy is all day longer, but 1%. So we're not taking that horse, the five, 1% out. Let's look at the six, GSR. So I'm doing Remington Park right now for Tony. Look at the breeding on the, on the six horse. More of a sprinter, the seven. Six and eight. Four horse. I'm going to look one more time. I don't... You might want to use them, but I'm going to say the six, the six and eight have to be added. One fifty-seven. So we're going to have to cut back somewhere else. So we'll have to look at this race real quickly. Six one. Was that our top pick? So I'm gonna eliminate I'm gonna eliminate low GSRs. 48 one for one. How easy did he do it? Six and a half furlongs. Like if this horse was one for one here, okay, six and a quarter, 48 GSR or 48 SOR. So I want to look at the SOR in the in the competition. 48 SOR. That was a 56 that this horse won last time out of Remington. The six did. So I'm eliminating the, eliminating the four. Seven, 
56 and barely lost out of that same race. Got to use the seven. This horse, that was a tough group last time, right? You see, you see the 10 1 race here 46 SOR. The horse goes off at seven to five, eight to five. Then you see 10 21. That was a 68 SOR, broke from the 11 hole and didn't run terrible and was 30 to one, right? Because that shows to show you tougher competition. Um, not the worst looking horse in the world. Has speed as well. I, I, I would be afraid of the five a little bit. This horse, look at this, 68 and dueled and, and barely lost. I mean, the three is solid. I think the three could be a single. 62 and ran good, has an outside post and Scotty Longshot. I'm going to say three and eight. Three and eight. This is the best I can get this ticket down right now. $105. All right, we've well, we got to keep trying. All right, so we'll keep going. I'm sure there's stuff going on right now, but I'm going to stay focused right now for Tony. So I'm going to get rid of this 47 right here on the four. Scotty Longshot. God, can I get rid of the Scotty Longshot? No. And I want to get rid of the six horse at 5%, but he's facing 72 average SOR. How do you get rid of him? This race is wide open. Sometimes, so if this $105, this is a nice $105 ticket, just so you know. You might want to use that. But if that's too much money for you, then sometimes just take the top three Scotty picks and call it a damn day. Maybe take a GSR and throw that in there, right? Because I recognize that's a lot of money. The four horse of Scotty Longshot, I want to eliminate him. So now what I'm going to do, okay, normally you can play this race just on race view. But in this case, I think if we're going to take away a couple of horses, we have to use handy view. I don't know any other way to do it. So the eight, they're going five furlongs. This horse faced a 58 group last time, but on a five to one, but broke bad. He won against a 66 group four back and he was bet to five to one throughout the last race. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't even persevered with, We can't throw out the eight. This guy's best race was going gate to wire. Otherwise, he's run good, but he's gone gate to wire. I'm going to eliminate the two. I'm going to eliminate the two. He needs to go gate to wire. And this, I don't know that he can. This horse has a 59 and one race on the turf going this distance. But they, I mean, okay, so now I got to take the GSR plus. Do you see what I'm doing here? Have to take it and see the breeding. 60 is not bad. Five horse. This horse didn't even win against a 50 group. Am I using the five? Not anymore. Okay. There's two horses gone. Oh, I wasn't using it before. So we only eliminated one. 90 bucks. All right. So now I got to find another one. This horse on turf, the three. I can't get rid of them. The six horse. Pressed. Against a, a pretty decent group, good connections, and only two tries. Okay, so this horse is not done good on turf. Great connections, doesn't seem to like turf. I got to get rid of the six. I love the connections, though. I'm just going to say that. Seven, five furlong, 60 group, didn't run good. This horse needs the lead. And could get there. Is somewhat tactical. Has a nice post. Has done better, though, on dirt. Let's see what the breeding is. 56. Look, now we're eliminating a 14% horse. But if you need me to continue to eliminate, I would eliminate the 7. There you go. That's the ticket. If you needed me to go further... I don't know what I would do. I maybe would look at another race. You guys went over at Hawthorne? So the advantage you have in the first leg is seeing where the betting's going. You can see this eight horse, Tony, this horse is getting bet. Why? I have no idea, but it is early. 3% horse who looks like dog crap going on the dirt for the first time. Now, I will say this. The GSR is better. And 
horse is a 52. And, how, it, you know, if the horse is going to run good, it's going to be today. You might want to add the eight. I mean, that's some real money, seven to two, but it is early. This horse had trouble last time out. Throw it off. Throw it. Throw this race out. Six is live. One horse is facing beat easier last time out, but that did it pretty easily. Good form the last three races, too. This horse needs the lead. Can the five go gate to wire? There's some speed in here. Okay. So maybe... Who's better? I think that the five is better on the lead than the seven, but I don't think we used the seven, did we? No, seven's out though. One horse. This horse has zero speed, but there's going to be speed in the race between those two horses. Sophie Doyle board. Ugh. I mean, I can't eliminate him. I, there you go. That's the best I could do in the time allotted. Okay. You got it? And you guys are blowing me up on the texts or on the uh, emails. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> All right. We got some first time starters over at Del Mar. So we got about 10 minutes. All right. Give me five. Maybe not that. I'll be right back.
Okay. What do you do when you just need to eat something? Just get some bread. Well, obviously, it looks like a wide open race, but this is our advantage having the GSR. 10 horses getting bet from a 12 to 1 morning line, and the GSR sniffed it out. That's a 74. It's incredible. I mean, now let's look at the overall turf breeding, 73, and this is a sprinter. You can see that, five furlongs, six and a half, five and a half, six. This is a sprinter. Big time. That post is perfect, too. The other thing I would look for in handy view, is there a fast gate workout? Because that will show speed sometimes, and there is. Because, <clears throat> you know, on, there's run-ups in workouts. So basically, essentially, when the trainer is trying to clock a horse, when it, it's running up or jogging up to that point, and then they're judging the time of the, of the workout, whereas so there's some momentum going up there called run-up. Whereas from the gate, that's the time. So, yes, the horse is showing speed, five to one. I think that all of us that have equine edge, have an advantage if that horse wins we we kind of knew it i like it now these square eddies we all know that they can run on turf they can run on dirt they can run on turf breeding seems good edwin maldonado you know he's a speed jockey this horse is big time bred the 11 big time morning line six to one big time this is a nice horse but look at the breeding Still, I wouldn't be surprised if this horse won, but I would not be surprised if you saw this horse get third. One of those ones, right, that wants longer, is really nice, might even get second, might even get up for first, but watch out for the 11. So maybe you got the 10 in front, but you've got the 11 horse somewhere in the exotics because I think the 11 is going to come. This horse is very nicely bred and a Kentucky bred. 10's a cow bread. 5's a cow bread. I, I like this 11, but not necessarily to win this race, but in the money. 1's going it, to, it's going to be tough from the rail. 6 horses, the 1 getting bet, but they could just be bet. I think this horse wants a little bit longer than this, and they could be betting this horse just because Flavian's aboard. Yeah, it has 26%, but that doesn't mean this horse is ready to win today. I think this horse wants longer, the eight. I think the seven wants longer. Don't really care for the two that much. Nine's breeding for turf, not that great. Four is not that great. But Scotty Longshot, remember we talked about this. The Scotty Longshot does well, but this horse is, I think this horse wants longer. I I, I like I like the I like the uh, the GSRs. I like the 10 and the 5. With maybe the 11 in the third spot. I'm going to be all over the 10. Like, I'm going to bet this horse right now myself. I'm going to do like an exact, uh, you know, 10. So for 10 with 5, 11. And then I'm going to come back with a trifecta. 10 with all with. 11. And then I'm going to bet the 10 to win. I love the post. I'm guessing based on that gate drill a couple of back that the horse has speed. I mean, five could win.
I, five's going to be near, near the lead, I can tell you that. Six horse seems pretty fast as well, but I think I saw, like, I mean, you can see clearly this horse wants more distance, what it seems like to me. But the works are pretty fast, but these aren't necessarily, these aren't gauge drills, right? So I don't know how fast this horse is. And you know, some, uh, I always work for Harris Farms, but sometimes the horses you don't even realize can be fast. This horse kind of stopped last time out and broke first. So, you know, this eight horse will be near the lead as well. But I think if the 10 horse is as fast as I think that she is, that could hurt the, the eight horse. But the eight horse is a Scotty long shot, so we respect. I can't wait to see uh, the 11. I think the 10 is going to run huge. I can't wait to see. Look at that GSR. I can't wait to see how the 11 runs because I think this is a horse worth maybe following depending on how she runs here. So we did a, Tony, we did an exacta, 10 over 5 and 11, and then a trifecta, 10, I did anyways, 10 over all with 11. By the way, Scott, you're right. Firsters do struggle. First time out, but there's so many firsters in here, but firsters do struggle first time out. But I think the 10 post on uh, is, is a really good one. And the horse has speed. So in this case, I think the 10 might be able to overcome that, but the traffic that horses have to face and stuff like that, you're right by the most part. The 10 will need to break good because you know, the five's going to. They're having a hard time getting the nine to load. <clears throat> now they're going to open the gate for the nine. Isn't that amazing how that makes such a difference? Crazy. Come on, 10. Break good. Beautiful gray broke good. And it is Princess Sadie who goes out to the early lead. Little Liliana's got some speed to find some for the There goes the five, who actually broke a little bit slow. And I, I like what the jockey did on the 10 right there because I think that I don't know the 10 was just as fast as these, but didn't want to be wide. Right now, advantage to five for sure. The ten's gonna have no choice but to go wide, and the eight's going wide too, so that hurt. So five advantage five right now. The eight's running good, so or the six is running good. So the top win percentage is running very good. And this horse has a good future because this horse is gonna want to go longer. Really good. Wow, look at the two gonna win this race. Two six five. Wow. The ten just didn't run good. I don't. I didn't see an excuse for the ten at all. Abel Sadio having a good day, huh? Watch Abel today. Eight to one. Well, and to Scott's point too. To Scott's point, firsters do have a tough time winning. Although the six, the six really ran good. Now, the two had a look, had trouble first time out, and came from behind this time. 
Maybe he wasn't ready first time out, so not a surprise. All right, let's get out to Churchill Downs, race number 10. Churchill, yeah, the two was a, wasn't was a first, or exactly. Yes, Chrissy, prize play. Way to go, Christina. Average SOR, the five horse, but he's not in the top two, Scotty. Not getting bet. On the dirt. GSR is fine. The horse has earned a little bit more money on the turf than he has the dirt, but not bad. I think the reason you're not getting bet is because people are having a hard time judging this horse, but I judge him off this race here at Churchill Downs on 621. So a 68 SOR, so we'll see if that's good or not, and got a second place finish, but it was only against five other horses, so you got to just like put this stuff in the back of your mind. This guy just won at 66 over at Keeneland, but never raced at Churchill Downs. Comes back at the same distance. Is there an inquiry at Delmar? Is that what they're saying? This guy needs a lead. No speed, no speed, no speed, no speed, no average speed. I like the four, but two is going to take him a long way. 3% horse. First time going this distance. The horse doesn't know it. Bread for it. Two's dangerous. Two's dangerous. I'm going to do a 4-2 exacta. Maybe I'll even box it. Trifecta. 4 with 2 with 3, 5, 6, 7. All right, see what happens. I think four is a horse to beat. I think the two horse is a good long shot on the lead. I mean, two horses. Brad to do this. Well, now they're forcing him because they were going so slow. Now the two's got to ask. It caught both the jockey on the two and the four off guard, which might hurt them or it could hurt the other horses. Four's loaded. I don't think that I don't. Oh man, it hurt the two a little bit. I think, but we'll see. Hopefully, the two can hang on for a second, and the other ones aren't coming. Come on, two, stay up. Ah, oh, God, he's stopping. 
I mean, ran ran really good. Now he's not changing leads, and that 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 hurt. They made that run on the outside, didn't help him. But the four is going to win the race. Four six five. Well, could have taken the four over the top two GSRs. By the way, remember I was telling you earlier in the show that I like to take the top chalk. So I'll grab these horses. And what I'll do in the morning sometimes when I'm, when I'm busy and I know I'm not going to be able to play is exactly what I do. I'll go here. I'll click on this horse here, and then I'll look at the top GSRs. Well, in this case, it doesn't do a mile and 70 yards, so that's a bad damn example. Um, we'll go here, Golden Gate. So we're going to use the four horse. I'm going to key the four. I'm not even going to handicap it other than this, and then I'm going to take the two and the three. So four over the two and the three, and they happen to be the Scotty top two picks. I'll do that. Like all, like I'll go do this the entire time. Evangeline Downs, I'm keying the five horse. So I'll do that for all the races with the with the with the chalk, and then I'll come back and see how I did for the day. And you, I, I've been winning almost every time. So it'll be the five. Well, what? Obviously, if this six horse comes in second, that's seven to one. That's going to pay good. Over the three. It's early in the wagering. I highly doubt that the five horse is going to go off at seven to one. Okay, that's one way of playing. Capish. Late pick four. Yes, sir. We can. Chrissy, are you still playing? Hawthorne? Get rid of the seven at two percent. Remember we talked about like this four horse here, Scotty's second pick, low win percentage, but the top win percentage is only 19%. So don't let that bother you. That four, 6% in this case does not bother me at all. 60 GSR, not bad, but it's the first time this horse is doing the distance. Often a horse is best. Okay. And look at the form of this horse. Four horse is interesting. Here's a play for you. You can do a four, nine, 10, Six. Exact a box, maybe four horses. But look at the three. Three's getting bet. So you look at this and you say, okay, 12,500 claiming, moving up to 20. But that was a 12,500 open claiming. This is a $20,000 non one is a one. So the three is very live. All right. Three is very live. All right. I don't know. Here we go. I'm, well, we got a little bit of time, so I wanted to handicap there for Chrissy. We've got time at Del Mar. Well, not liking Golden Gate. Why? I don't know. All right. Fun stuff. Anybody else down or is it just me? Sometimes your internet will do that. Golden Gate's canceled due to COVID, huh? <laughs> is that for real? It is? Oh, shit, I thought you were joking. Well, my system didn't like it. I'm going to tell you that.
through next Friday. Wow. <clears throat> Anybody else system down? There we go. All right. Oh, canceled. Even says canceled. Wow. That wasn't there before. We actually show it canceled. So, all right. Brad's watching. That's great that it says canceled, but it's still in the upcoming races. Can't be there. That might not be his fault, though, because... That might be the tote. All right. Well, tell you what we're going to do. 15 minutes before the late big four. We're going to go straight there after this. Let's just watch Hawthorne and see if we can get the 6, 4, 9, 10 exacta box. So that's one of the price plays, the six horse. We saw a race where they went earlier and they went about the same quarter, slowed down to like 47 and one and one. So we'll see. You gonna take a nap, Bill? You got COVID? Christina, I'm not touching that one. This is a friendly show. But I hear you, sister. Don't get me going. Come on, Six. Look at this 55 to 1 on your ass. Are you serious? You're a price play, for God's sakes. You are an Equine Edge price play, and you're going to let a 55 to 1 shot beat your ass? Say it's not so. Come on. Come back. There you go. Fight. Left-handed urging. Come on. Price play. Come on. Get up. No, no, no. Change leads. No, no. Oh, you're both done. <laughs> Wall of horses. Is that the other price play? The nine? I think it might be. I don't know. Nine, four, three. Yes. Nine, four, three. Would we have had that? I don't even know. That's a Scotty long shot. That's a Scotty long shot in price play. And it came in the four horse. It's got a second pick we talked about. Kind of like that horse. We would have won. If I had that uh, the the soundboard right now, I'd be like ding 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 ding. Mahoney Valley was canceled. Okay, out to Del Mar now. Man, I can't keep you guys happy. Pick four. 60 bucks. Let's see if we can find a single. That's the key because then whatever size of a bet you want to make, then at least we have the single. Let's look around first. All right. Let's see if this two's a single. Top two, Scotty. Top two win percentage, top two GSR. We need to see how good the seven is. Gate to wire barely hanging on, going five and a half furlongs on the dirt. Has a better GSR on the dirt and uh, pretty wide, pretty even on the dirt in the turf and six and a half furlongs. Looks, I mean, this horse is well bred. Nice filly. Let's see the two. Okay, so one of the things with the seven horse, I don't know if she can rate or not because she went gate to wire and barely hung on. So that's going to throw people off a little bit on that horse. The other thing is they can see six and a half furlongs with the two and the two one easy, right? 50 SOR, 50 SOR for the seven. There is absolutely no way of knowing. But, and don't forget, we talked about the morning on odds maker. His or her job is to judge what which what the horse is going to go, the, the off odds are going to be, right? So in this case, he's just saying, I think that the off odds are going to be nine to five. I don't, I can't separate these two horses. 
Now I just want to look at the other ones just in case. And the eight horse ran against a 52 SOR. That wasn't, there's nothing wrong with that. Barely won, but could improve. Oh man, see, I don't know. I mean, he's, this guy is a 61. Less is not really, this guy looks like more turf, but we'll see. No, he's, he's dirt. He's, he's dirt, but not the worst looking long shot in the world. This guy's really run good. Nothing wrong with the five. Cutting back in distance, and uh, but you know, I probably don't like the six much. Is probably the only one. I really don't think this horse looks that bad. Oof. What throws me off on the seven? Yeah, Woodbine's been growing on me as well, Scott. What up? You know, some of these races, you just have to take a risk. Remember we talked about that? How about this? We got two price plays here as well in a wide open race. Hmm. Do we single the 11? No speed in this horse. 10, 17. I mean, 11 does break, break from a wide post. What I like to do sometimes is look at the horses on the inside to see if they have speed. 10 can show some speed, but all, although I don't like his chances. I mean, I'm not using the four. I'm not using the six, obviously. Low, low GSRs. Nine horse. They're not in the top Scotties. I mean, that number on, on the 11, it's 76, is just massive. But what about the seven? This horse could end up going off at eight or nine to one and could, could go good. Look at, ran good at a 58 GSR and now stretches out and has a 69 GSR. I, I kind of like the seven. The eight horse can improve, show some speed. The one horse is a price play. Th this horse had issues last time out. This horse could go gate to wire from the, from, from the rail. I am not going to be surprised. I like the one. Scotty Longshot. The only thing I would do here is add the seven. I might, depending on depending on what you want to do, I might, might, might single the 11 in the last race. Maybe. But we can't leave the five out, can we? That's a price play as well. If that thing beats us, we're all going to, yeah, we can't leave that horse out. Son of a bitch. You either use all these horses or you single the 11, which... Race number six, possible single. Who? Who are we talking? Number eight. Let's see here. Optional claiming, and he's not in for the tag, and been facing way tougher competition. Let's check out the turf. Really more bred for dirt. And um, so what am I talking about, turf? So he, he was on the turf, and now he's on dirt against easier. 
what here happened here at Sanita though, off a bit slow and eased. He's in better form though. I I I could see where you're coming from with the eight. Seems to be back in really good shape. I mean, this horse is I, I don't like the two. Facing way, way easier horses. Four is a live long shot. Really not very good turf breeding. I'm going to have to pass on that one. Wide open race here. This is a wide open race. Very wide open. Psycho Dar. Five furlongs, has a lot of speed, faced a 60 group last time out. This guy has won his only start at five furlongs and seems better on the turf. So the nine horse is a horse that has to be used one for one at the distance. So again, this is you're going to see a lot of this in this race because the race is wide open. The system doesn't know what to do with these horses. Faced a weaker group here in the one and has the rail. I don't like the one, so I'm going to eliminate the one. One flew over. Do we have time? Abel Cedillo. I, I, I'm, you know, maybe maybe it's just as simple as taking the top three picks, right? Maybe trying to beat the eight. Thanks, Mr. Edison. I mean, sometimes you got to take risks. If that horse had an inside post, I'd already get rid of him. This horse has been facing easier horses, but has really good form. Really good form. All turf, too. No, both, but yeah. I mean, hmm. All right, so lock that. We've locked that. It might give us a single. Yeah, it's England the two. We might have to do that. We might not have any choice. That's what I would say right there. Here's your ticket, 50 bucks. If you want to play a bigger ticket, then you know you can you can cover more. I mean the top. The seven horse, not, I'm not going to be surprised if it runs good. 70 GSR. But I think I'll just, I'm, I, I would, you know, this is probably our best shot at a single, it looks like. But, I mean, what if the seven just takes off out of the gate and the two has to check up? Drayden gets intimidated by... By Mike Smith. Seven goes gate to wire. I could see where you guys think that maybe this horse is a, a single. I'm surprised this horse is getting so much action, to be honest with you, because you can't really see it. So the fact this horse is getting bet so much and it just be, could because of those two graded races. I'm not even judging those races really because this horse had never this horse didn't win the non-graded stakes race. So just kind of an also ran in those other two on the turf. Has a really good GSR though. I will say that. Yeah, I mean first leg, the horse getting real action. Maybe the six horse not getting bet. Maybe we can let's try it. Maybe you can eliminate the six here. Six is not getting bet, not in the top two, Scotty. Maybe we can add the seven horse here and generate the ticket. $75 play. How about that? Five, seven, eight.
with two, three, four, eight, nine, with two and seven, with one, five, seven, eight, and eleven for a fifty cent denomination. Maybe. I'm not using Scotty's pick and race six. Where? Oh, the two. Why aren't I? Ah, the only race this horse ran good in was against a 40 SOR. I don't know why the system likes it. <coughs> I will say, I don't think the horse is going to win. I know it's the top Scotty pick, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if this horse is on the lead, but I'm going to play against it. I'm going to play against it. But I love the fact that the Scotty algorithm has the two. I think it's cool. Like it's not just contrary to popular belief that it's just taking favorites. And many of these horses that are our top numbers get bet to the favorite. They're not even the morning line favorite. All right. <clears throat> 22 and three. I mean, the horse seems well in hand, but that's a fast, fast pace. I like the way this Scotty Longshot's riding right now, the seven. Eight seems to be all out right now. We might be relying on the Scotty long shot right now, and the six is running good. Oh, here comes the eight. I mean, it's going to come down to the six and the eight. And the eight just went really, really wide, but could be best. Come on, eight. Eight seems to have the measure. And look how far back to the five. Well far back. So those of you that singled the eight, great job. Eight, six, five. All right. I mean, two horse showed the lead early, and then I don't know if he's even crossed the finish line, finish line yet. But all right. Either way, all of us move on there with the eight. Scotty's second pick. Co top win percentage. No, never mind. Hold on. Sorry. Sky second pick and 15% uh, top GSR. Really had a top GSR, didn't it? On the dirt. I thought GSR is amazing. Eight wins the race. The five ran good. And we eliminated the six horse who had a 24% number. But what did we say? Maybe this was a horse to try to beat because he had faced such weak competition, but handled it but just not good enough to, to beat the eight. Do you single the eight, Tony? We did. <clears throat> Churchill Downs race number 11. Okay. Two minutes before the race. I think this is going to be my last race, guys. Because Delmar is really not coming up for 20 something minutes. So I'm, we'll play this race and then call it really nice number for the three horse. 
So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to overthink it. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 3, 9, 10, 11 exacta box because we've been talking about these horses. So I'm just going to do it. 3, 9, 10, 11 exacta box, maybe even a trifecta box. 3, 9, 10, 11. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to do the same thing with the trifecta. 3, 9, 10, 11. I'll do that for five bucks. All right, so then I'll go on to maybe other things, but like I'll do something like that. Yeah, nice single. Way to go. Nice going, El Novato. Congratulations. Okay. I mean, the three horse. First time starter. So people can't read first time starters. Works look very good. That's a dominating number. 82. I mean, don't we have to do just for the hell of it? Because we'll kick ourselves. Just do a saver like 310 exact a box, right? Got to do that no matter what. So imagine, let's just say it loses. But you do that and one out of 10 you hit. You have so banked, it's not even funny. You still made a ton of money. 310. So let's look at the 12, 28%. So the first thing I noticed, you see, so first of all, the horse faces a 50 SOR at seven furlongs, gets second, then goes six furlongs at 50 SOR and Breaks bad, went off at four to five, and says hung. One, I don't know if I trust this horse. Two, has a wide post. And look at where, even though this is on the straightaway still, and then three, that was a really good effort last time out, but, and that was, it, it was. Maybe the horses figured things out, ran a good race against seven other horses. I don't know. I definitely have mixed feelings on the one. On that horse. I know, David, that's true. Where's Dave and Jose when I need is Dave on Delmar right now? Is he covering Delmar? He's been covering it. I speaking of the devil, he just texted me. I think he's doing Delmar. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that tweet I sent out. It's been a while. I was golfing with Weaver and my stepfather, David. And Weaver was using a pink golf ball. <laughs> and he hits it, and this kind of the sun was in my eyes, and I couldn't really see it. I'm like, where did it go? And then he walks right up to the camera, and he goes, it's in the streets. It's so hilarious. I need to tweet that out. I, I usually tweet it like once a year, it's, but it's funny as shit. Um, this horse, 72 GSR. He's had high GSRs, burnt a lot of money, um, been this distance. I mean, he competes. I will say this. Don't forget, sometimes these horses take a while to mature. That was a 60 SOR group. That was a 60. So now he's getting this. Um, I'm sorry. No, it was a 60 SOR. That was a tougher group. So maybe the horse is getting better. So if I had a win bet right now, I would be on the 11. But did I even cover the 11? I don't think I did, did I? Oh, I did. 3, 9, 10, 11. So now what I'm going to do, since I like that horse best and I think I found something, ah, race is off. You guys are bad. You guys are really, really bad at this. I was going to bet the 11 to win. That's very fast on this track. I don't care if it's a straightaway or not. There's the nine and running easily. I know you said the two, Gary, but from the rail like this and as fast as they're going and that close to the pace, going to have to be much faster. The 11 seems to be loaded with horse. The nine is loaded with horse. I just don't know how good the 12 is. Did I use the 12? I can't remember. Did we do three, nine, 11, 12, or what did we do? Four is done. 12 has got horse. You can see the jockey's confidence. But the 9? No, nine's asking. The 11's loaded. This could be 11-12. I can't remember what I played. 
Where's my three? Three's three's not or nine's not done. I don't know who I have. Twelve. The jockey in the twelve was always riding with confidence. Oh, did the ten get up? I I don't. I don't even. We'll have to look and see what we bet. My wagers. Oh, what well, I didn't have the twelve. Three nine. 3, 9, 10, 11. And the 12 won the race. And the 12 was what? Oh, that was the top win percentage. So he finally got there. All right. Hey, sometimes you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So I, I don't even have a problem with that. I'm just glad I didn't get the win bet in. So you guys did a really good job of not letting me know about the race coming up. I would go to Goldstream or Golden Gate race number six, but it's not running. You got the pick four, John? All right, you got Hawthorne and we're done. So we'll do Hawthorne. We don't have a GSR because we don't cover a mile and 70 yards on the breeding. I can probably fix that and make sure we do next time, actually. So I'm going to get rid of these horses, get rid of that. So it's left with that. So I look at the seven, second race off a long layoff. Didn't run terrible. Went off at seven to two, three to one. Um, understandable that the horse slowed down, but let's see the the four horse. I mean, really, really tough one because hold on, they both ran. No, they didn't run on the same day. Ten thirty, fifty s fifty sor there, forty six sor there. Got a second place finish. So. Sometimes you can read a story on a horse, right? So like on the five horse, you start like four back here and you go, okay, um, was a was a 52 SOR faced and didn't run good, went off at nine to one, then dropped down to a 50 and ran better and then went to a 46 and didn't run good. So what happened? Then comes over against a 46 group here going a mile and 70 yards on the five and goes off at even money and breaks eighth from the rail and barely loses. Somebody knew something. Were they stiffing the horse this entire time? Like, where'd that run come from? Now gets the same surface, same distance, same level. The by far best rebate program is Express Bet. By far. Tell them I sent you. See, Aaron. Thank you very much. Nice, John. Way to go. So, 10.23. 46 group five horse face uh, on 1011 a 46 group got second and was bet hard I mean this is where you have to sometimes just trust the numbers right and my inclination would be to bet the five but I don't necessarily trust the connections I mean why is this horse running like dog shit the entire time and all of a sudden goes off at even money make sense of this please was it the dirt surface maybe maybe the horse didn't like the uh Maybe didn't like the synthetic at Arlington Park. Could be it. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Matter of fact, if we give the, if it, that, that bodes well for this horse even more. Scotty Longshot, five. This horse is going a mile and 70 yards and actually has a better record at a mile and 70 yards than on the, on the, the, on the, the other distances. So not going to be surprised by a good effort there. They're behind the gate. Shit. Look at this four horse. Oh, well, let's just use the trifecta and we'll do it for one, one uh, 50 cents and we'll do it for three bucks. 
<laughs> it's not using the two. So it, it's not using the two, which is interesting because I, I really do like the two as well. Um, guys, if I had to pick one horse in this field, I'm going, I'm going with the five. But, I mean, I, that's playing against the Scotty. Maybe do an exact at five, seven. Wager. I kind of like, I, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to do an exacta box. I'm going to do a trifecta. I take that back. For a hundred bucks, five, seven with five, seven with four, two. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to win if I have the money. I don't know how much I in there. I have 400 bucks in there, huh? So I'm going to do an exacta maybe. 200 bucks, just in case the seven doesn't run. Did the two just get scratched? Did that just happen? It did. Well, that makes it easier. Five, seven, and then maybe the four in there somewhere. My wagers. Okay, so there's a little bit of delay because of that. No, I guess not. Uh, trifecta. I'm going to say five, seven with five, seven with four, of course. And then as a cover bet, I'm going to say five and seven with the four as a cover bet. Now, here's the thing. Here's here When we talk about contingency plans, like I've been bragging all show, do we make room just in case one of these horses doesn't come in the money? Like, maybe we have to do that. What about the two's out, so we know that. Who would you use? You'll get a price if you, if you hit it. So let's do a superfecta for 25 bucks. Five, seven with four, five, seven with four, five, seven with all. But that doesn't really cover it. So we have to do a trifecta. We have to cover our bet right now. $25, five, seven with four, five, seven with all. Just in case. All right. They are at the gate. Good luck. Peter Galassi with the call. Oh, something happened with the four. You guys see that? It's like the jockey like fell out of the irons on the four. Now, see, I don't understand. You does anybody understand the strategy right now of the jockey on the four? Why would you press? Why would you just sit on the outside and say, unless he's just super confident that he has the best horse? That strategy to make to me makes zero sense. And betting these horses just makes me even more mad. Like he's look at he's forcing the jockey on the seven to push. Why? I don't know. So he just shot his wad. So he's not going to win the race. And now he's going to be lucky to hold on for third because he tried to duel with the seven horse, right? Five is going to be there somewhere. 
That's there's no doubt about that. Seven's going to win the race of the five, so that's good. Now, ideally, the four is going to come in third. Well, now this four is coming on, then seven is struggling a little bit. I don't know. I can't tell. Come on, five, get up. Stay up, seven. Get up, five. Get up. All right. Five, seven, four. Winner, winner, winner. It's a good way to end. Don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. Don't forget. Please ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring my bell. Ring my bell. Who sings that? You gotta, I, I'm, that's an old, well before most of your time. Hit the like button. What else? Follow us on Twitter at Equine Edge at Scotty Pick Six. Um, join us here. Uh, uh, join the Facebook group. Don't forget about that. And subscribe to this YouTube channel, everybody. It's important. Uh, you know, guys, I don't know who I, I enjoy the hell out of this. You guys are um, this was a fun show, and I enjoy every one of them though. And I appreciate all the chatting and everything. You got that, you guys? Yeah, that was awesome. We did okay on that. Actually, the, the four horse helped soften up the uh, the five a little bit, or the seven. So we actually got the five to win, which is even better for us. Thank you, Keith. Sorry you didn't get that eight horse home. But let's hang here and see what this paid. But this is great. Five, seven, four. Five hour show, I know, Joe. I uh, know. My 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 legs know. So what's this thing going to pay? What do you guys think? What's the trifecta going to pay? Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to have you, Jeff. John Paul, good job. Profitable day. That's sweet. Right on. Roger, you're welcome. Thanks. Hey, thanks for joining. I'm glad you, I'm glad you caught it live for the first time. Oh, you joined today? Sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's awesome, man. The more people we build, Vito, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. That's great. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, you know, We've got more coming, man. This is just the beginning. Wait, I can't wait for you guys to see the mock race. Like literally, it doesn't matter where, which track the horse ran on. It, it covers a track variant. You press a button and it runs the race and shows you the pace of the race. In my mind, we're going to have a lot more tools, but in my mind, as far as handicapping tools go, pace is a big deal. And we aren't covering that very well yet, but we will. But just remember, it's not like we can just put a product up every day. I mean, this stuff takes a long time to... To do so be patient but and hey the more people we get and the stronger we get it's just going to make it better for everybody you're welcome christina thank you so much i'm glad you had fun and uh get your pick four home at del mar who, who are you rooting for eric thank you so much you got that sweet um thank you tony there you go five seven four who do you need christina so we can root for you. Don't forget to hit the like button, you guys. Let's see what this uh, pays. What do I have? I have a $200 exacta box. I know that. I think I have a $200 trifecta, too, 574, don't I? Thanks, Kevin. That, that's not the right exacta. I promise you that. That says 9.5. <laughs> There's no way it paid 3580. I'll leap out of this chair if it paid 3580. That's not the right number. Uh, exact to six dollars and ten cents. You know what? That's not bad. And we got a um, I got a ten dollar trifecta. Hold on here. So let's see, let's see what's in the account. So I had fourteen to start. I put a thousand in there, and let's see. All right, didn't pay that great. I was hoping for more than that, to be honest with you. Let's see, let's see what these payouts are. So the trifecta paid the most. Five, seven with five, seven with four. Four hundred dollars paid two thousand. We bet two hundred on this trifecta on a ten dollar one for a hundred bucks. It paid, but it cost two hundred. And then I did a cover bet with the five, seven with the four, which I have no regrets. I had to do that. So hey, either way, I bet eight hundred bucks and I won twenty one hundred bucks. So that's okay. Hey, I'll take losing $300 to hang with you guys all day long. 
All right, Angel, hey, thanks for joining us for the first time. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody. Have a nice rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you later, okay?